Lirial One Energy Lirial One Comfy Hello everybody! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on into First Snow, which is a game I've been meaning to play for ages now. I've been meaning to play this for so long, <laughs> and I have not gotten around to it. But it's finally happening. It's finally happening! After way too long. I feel like we, are, we have been so overdue a Yuri game, because it's been over a year since I finished Please Be Happy, and I don't think... I don't think I've played any other Yuri games since then. It, it was Please Be Happy, and then last year was just all over the place. <laughs> and I didn't get to enjoy Yuri visual novels like I like I have so many times before. But that's okay, because we're getting back to it now. And what better time to get back to it than uh, Lesbian Visibility Week, which has started uh, yesterday. Woo! I would do the confetti button, but it's it's somewhere I'm I'm snuggled up in my blanket. I can't find it. It's fine. <laughs> but welcome in everybody. Welcome, welcome. I hope everyone is doing well. Happy Tuesday. I can't believe Yay! Oh that there's the confetti. Thank you. <laughs> Yay, women! Yay! <laughs> Too comfy for confetti. That's okay. Everyone else can do it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Just just throw it over my head. Thank you very much. <laughs> but yes, welcome in everybody. Uh, congratulations on the first Rika. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Lyra. Hello, Suzume. Hello, LJ Bray. Hello, Grace No. Hello, Akiri. Thank you so much for the 31 months. I can't believe it's been 31 months. That feels like such a big number. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for resubbing. And Kunye, hello. <laughs> Thank you for the uwu voice, but uh, it, you actually reminded me. I, I think because it's been so long since I did a visual novel stream, um, I usually disable the uwu that like the voice redeems when I'm doing games with a lot of reading. <laughs> so you inadvertently reminded me that I forgot to turn that off. So uh, thank you, thank you very much for the reminder. <laughs> but I I did refund your points. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I hope you're doing well. Also, Flint, hello. Lovely to see you. And Bob, welcome on in. Welcome, welcome. And Nugs, lovely to see you too. There's so many people here. Is everyone ready for some Yuri time? Are we ready for Yuri time? Oh, thank you for all the lurks. I'm hoping this will be a, a comfy, comfy stream to lurk in. Just playing a video game. We got a, a lot of reading. For some reason, my mouth tracking is off again. Is it because I changed things? Hold on. Ah, ah, testing. Okay. Okay, that's better. Um, it's actually opening my mouth now when I <laughs> when I open my mouth. As it should do. Oh wow. Okay. Ugh, I don't know what's been happening recently. I've been having tech trouble. It feels like everything I've been using for the longest time has just randomly decided to stop working, even though I haven't changed anything. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Also, Timothy, hello as well. Meowdy, meowdy. 
And oh, you're not ready. Now you are. I'm, you're right. I'm also not ready, but I will be. There it is. Yeah, now I'm ready. Now I'm ready. I've got the, the white can monster today because I figured the snow, snow is white. Let's, let's have the white can. <laughs> So it, it is the Ultra Zero today, which I am drinking. Mm. Have a nice big sip to begin with. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing this though. I've I meant to play this ages ago because I, I wanted to I wanna play twofold. I really wanna play twofold. That came out end of last year. And I was like, okay, I wanna play that, but I wanna play first snow first, because this game came out first, and it's technically a prequel to Twofold. I think it's more just, like, backstory for s side characters in Twofold. I'm not sure. But I wanted to do it in this order, because this one came out first. Oh, can I roll a d6 for you? I can. Hold on. Let me get a, get a d6. Okay, pink or teal? Which one shall I roll? <laughs> I've got two I've got two D6 here. One's one's pink, one's teal. Okay, let's let's roll the teal one. That's a two! I rolled a two. Let me put my dice back away again. And Mogo, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome in. Thank you so much for the the adorable art that you did for me. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I, I, when I, when I woke up and saw it, I just, my, my heart melted a little bit. It was so nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing it. Uh, if anyone didn't see it, um, I, I added Mogu's art to my thumbnail for today's stream. Hold on. I can, I can get the thumbnail up on stream, right? Let's have a look. Where did I, where did I? Save it. Here we go. This is this is the thumbnail I made for the stream. Ha -ha! Let's make it a little bit smaller. But Mogo did this art, which I'm—it's so cute. I love it so much. I love this. Look how cute it's. It's got a little. It's got a tiffy on my lap. We both got our scarves on. It's so comfy. It's so nice, and it's also really funny because I actually have like a. It's 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 like a, a dungarees dress, like overalls dress. Like it's a skirt, but it's got like the top part attached to it. But it's in this exact shade of red, and I I have a skirt just like that in real life. <laughs> so it's so good. <gasps> Wait! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, Bob! Bob, thank you so much for the throne gift. Oh my goodness! I covered up the the text on the alert. Hold on, let me. Can I replay the alert? I don't think I can replay the alert for the the throne ones. But either way, thank you so much! Thank you for the monster! I get more monster! And Milo, thank you for the 37 months too! Oh my goodness. Also, oh, uh, you changed your name because you're going to be a PNG tuber to... Oh, Hikari, te uh, Hi Hikari Kensei. That's a cool name! Welcome, welcome! That's exciting! I hope you have fun with it. And Zarok, welcome to. Is that me third wheeling? It definitely is. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm 100% the third wheel here. I'm just. They're, they're just having a lovely, lovely gay time over there, and I'm just like, don't, don't, don't find me. I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm just enjoying the vibes. I'm. I'm here with Tiffany, who is the love of my life. <laughs> so it all works out. <laughs> me here, just like forever single. At least I have cat. A cat who immediately left my bedroom <laughs> as soon as I started speaking. I wanted her to, I wanted Tiffany to stay with me today because she curled up so nicely on my bed. She was fast asleep on my bed. She was curled up beautifully. I thought she might stay there while I was streaming. The second I said hello into my mic to test it, she got up off the bed and sat by the door. Every time. She knows when I'm gonna be streaming and she's like, I don't wanna be in the room for that, let me out. <laughs> it's a shame. I I really wish I could just leave the door open, but sadly I live with people, so <laughs> if I lived alone I could. But 
alas, I must close the door so that people don't hear me play video games. <laughs> oh, that's what the, the D6 was for. I see. Makes sense. Thank you so much for the monster. I get some more Rosa. I'm so glad. And that works out really nicely too because you got me the the fiesta last time as well so it's a different lot this time thank you thank you so much restock me up Ah, uh, but yeah I'm, I'm excited for this though i'm glad you like the thumbnail too i love how it turned out it's so cute mogu's art is always adorable always the cutest art it makes me so happy <laughs> but yeah that's i'm i'm very easy to 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 make happy like if you if you plop a cat on my lap, I'm happy. I'm happy then. That's that's all I need. Uh, also, if I miss anything in chat, please let me know because I'm I got distracted trying to find the thumbnail, but it, it's so it's so cute. I'm happy with it. I think it looks so nice. And also, can I just say this this whole menu menu screen here? This is so beautiful. I love it so much. But yeah, ah, uh, crazy how you can see lesbians this week. I know, right? Uh, if 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 you're a lesbian, be careful this week. You are visible. I was going to say, don't do crimes because you can be seen. Don't do crimes anyway. Like you shouldn't do that anyway. But especially not this week. We're visible. Be careful. <laughs> also, Sparrow, hello, Yuri time, Yuri time. It's Yuri time. I'm so ready. I still can't believe how long it's been because I was going back through my vods to figure out the last uh, Yuri game I played and I was like no no way has it been a year since please be happy and it's been over a year since please be happy also Dima hello lovely to see you and oh my god <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much for the gifts of oh no am I gonna have like oh you're, you're like inviting the devs into my stream what are you doing <laughs> Oh my goodness, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for the gift subs. No, oh, and there's a hype train. Oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't believe it. You did, just summon devs, just gift subs to everybody. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the hype train, for the, the gifts. Oh, this is good, a good way to start out Lesbian Visibility Week. Uh, treat, treat a lesbian. The lesbian is me. Treat me, please. Thank you. <laughs> We're visible. Oh, does that mean you can't lurk in chat without being seen? No, it's okay. If you want to lurk, if you want to hide, I will simply avert my gaze. To these gays. <laughs> Welcome, Melamea. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you, though. But yeah, if anyone ever wants to lurk, never feel pressured to speak up in chat if you don't want to. But uh... <laughs> but yeah, hopefully this will be a comfy stream. I'm looking forward to it. Just enjoying the vibes. Although it's like from what I've heard about Twofold, I've heard it's incredibly real. I've heard that it's so real. <laughs> And I'm I'm really excited to play it. But yeah, I wanted to play this first. Originally, what I wanted to do was I was planning to play this uh, last December. I was going to play it in December because I was like, oh, first snow, a uh, snow for winter, December, Christmas. It, it fits thematically. But I already had so many games on the go that I, I felt like I couldn't really start another one until I'd finished some of the ones I already had. And also the Talos Principle 2 came out and that <laughs> that became my life. So um, so I, I didn't get around to playing this in December, but it's okay because we're playing it now. And then once I'm done with this, I'm going to go straight into Twofold as well. So this is going to be the new series for now. Because it's been a while since... It's been a little while since I finished Ghost Trick. I figured it's about time we have a another visual novel-ish series going on <laughs> straight oh no no now you feel more pressure to talk no that's that's not my intention please feel free to be cozy in the background i got blankets 
I've set blankets up. Feel free to burrito in a blanket and not speak if you want. <laughs> But yeah, I'm it's it's I've really meant to play this for so long, but I'm finally getting around to it. And then that means that twofold Tuesdays can be a thing. I I feel like when I say that out loud, I want to say it as Tuesday to have the two sound, but it feels really weird for me to say Tuesday. It it sounds wrong to me. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday in it. I <laughs> twofold Tuesday. What if I just say twofold? <laughs> no, no, that's awful. Never mind. Never mind. I wish I hadn't said that. Uh, two, twofold Tuesday. It's all right. Two, two, twofold Tuesday. We can just have both. Just have both sounds. It's not a problem. Oh, uh, Bob, wish you could continue playing. Please be happy. Your brain's too mean to you lately. Oh, is it like the, the reading? Are you struggling with like the reading aspect of it? Yeah, if 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 you're having a if you're having a bad brain time with that, then yeah, it's probably best to leave that until the brain is putting words together a bit better. But hopefully, hopefully things pick up soon. Hopefully your brain behaves soon and you can enjoy it. Because please be happy, it's so good. It's such a lovely game, and I've been really excited to play this too. Because it's so funny. I also really want to replay uh, Heart of the Woods as well. Because I have not played that game since it came out. And it came out a really long time ago. It came it came out like a surprisingly long time ago. I always think like, oh yeah, that Heart of the Woods didn't come out that long ago, right? Oh, oh that's quite a few years. <laughs> oh, Melamea, thank you for the bits too. Hype train, everyone on board. Choo -choo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the generosity, everyone. It It really means a lot to me. I could do Hype it the train. other way around. I'm on board. Lyriel one party. Yeah! Oh, the Texas speech took a second to kick in there. <laughs> I could do it the other way around too. Twofold Tuesday. That's just awful. That's just cursed. That just feels wrong in every way. Thank you, Lyra. <laughs> oh, Lyra, I love how so many of our conversations are just like, this is awful and I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, true friendship. <laughs> true friendship to me is seeing a Weezer mashup on YouTube and sending it to Lyra and going, hey, I saw Weezer and thought of you. <laughs> but, ah, oh, Azaria too, hello. Oh, you wonder what kind of cozy would it be? Would it be like, oh, this is nice, I feel nice. Or would it be, I, I die for this. This is what fuels my soul now. That's what I'm wondering about. I, I feel like it's going to be emotional. I'm hoping in like a, a good way, but I don't actually know too much about this. Uh, I know of the characters, and I know that people who've played Twofold have said they've been emotionally destroyed in the best kind of way by it. So that's that's like all of my knowledge going into it. I, I always try and stay as unspoiled for story games as I can, because I love experiencing the story myself for the first time because <laughs> uh, it's something that happened with please be happy as well like i was going to help out with uh, a little bit of play testing for it but i didn't end up doing that in the end i helped with a bit of scripting for some like disconnected scenes but i didn't actually play test it in the end and i'm really glad that i didn't because it meant i got the first experience of the story on stream and it oh. Oh, that game was amazing. It was so good. <laughs> oh, Devil May Cry. I remember this game from my teens. That's still quite new. Yeah, that's the exact feeling. It's like there was there was a post that I saw that was like, hey, everybody, did you know that Gangnam Style is 12 years old? And I was like, no, it's not. No, it's not. You're simply lying. It can't be. It, it has not been 12 years <laughs> since Gangnam Style came out. It has. It has, and it's painful. <laughs> Wait, like, uh, no, no, yeah, retro consoles are like the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube, right? I've seen people calling the PlayStation 3 retro and it pains me. It pains me so much. It feels, it feels so strange. 
for, for it to be considered retro but it's like when you when you do look at the years it oh time is fake time is awful i i simply wish i could stop the passage of time because it's going too fast <laughs> Uh, whatever you do, don't look up when Grim Fandang- Oh, when did- I'm- I'm not gonna look it up. I'm- I'm not going to. I can't. I can't be devastated like that. <laughs> oh, your favorite's when they undershoot it enough that it feels wrong still and you're like, that can't be right. Then it's old? No! That's even worse! That's- yeah, that'd be like, hey, did you know that Gangnam Style is a decade old? Be like, no way it- no way is it a decade old. You look it up, it's like, oh, it's 12, 12 years old. I see. Gangnam Style is going to be a teenager next year. <laughs> the thing that gets me the most is knowing that people who were born in 2000 are like fully grown adults. Like it's, that's when that first happened, like the first year when it was like, yeah, anyone who was born in 2000 is an adult. That was the moment when I was like, but but 2000 was only a little while ago, what? <laughs> but no, we're, al we're already 24 years into the millennium. It's wild. It's so wild. Lyra, no! No, you did the thing! Grim Fandango's 20 years old. Oh no, no way it is. And then, no, it's actually 26. You just did the thing. How could you? <laughs> How could you? No. That is so wild. That's so wild to me. I'm, I, I feel like I'm so bad at judging like ages of things. Like I'll think of a game and be like, oh yeah, that came out like three years ago. It was like 10. <laughs> I just don't know. Uh Already in 2034. Uh, remembering playing Stronghold as a kid in 2001. Does, I am now ash, scattered on the floor. True. It's it's so true. It's, it, it's always really funny to me when people think that I'm way younger than I am. Because a lot of people seem to think I'm a lot younger than I am. Like, I'm not going to, like, outright say my age, but... I think some people would be surprised to know how old I actually am. <laughs> but it's it's always funny to me because I look a lot younger than I am. So people will be like, oh, you're in your 20s. And I just look at them and go, yes, I am. Thank you. If, if you want to think that, then yes, I definitely am. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, just to make everyone feel even older. We bared witness to the birth of the Souls-like genre. We did. We did. That's so true. That is wild. Oh. I need to stop thinking about this. I feel... I feel like I'm gonna start t yelling at kids to get off my lawn in a minute. <laughs> Let me have a sip of my boomer juice, I guess. <laughs> oh, I'm really not helping the age things with having the, the white monster today as well. Like, the amount of people who are like, oh yeah, boomer juice, like... I don't get it, because I don't think I've ever seen a boomer drinking monster, but... <laughs> either way, I'm having monster. But yeah, it, I got I got so off topic immediately. But I'm really excited to, to start playing this game. It's, it looks so good. And I'm a huge style... I'm a huge fan of this, like, uh... Where's my cursor here? This cutout style. Like the paper pinned on cut out paper art style. I mean, anyone who knows me knows, like, I've literally got things taped to my overlay right now. Like up here, I've got my little sticky note in the corner. I have a cork board on my chatting screen. <laughs> I love this kind of like scrapbook aesthetic. I love it so much. It's so great. But yeah, I'm, I, I don't actually know what this is going to be like. So I'm excited to check it out. But, oh, good news, it is you, Postman Zaryad. Or should you say Canon Zaryad? Because Zaryad's a postman. Like Pat, but with a with a moped instead of a red truck. <gasps> nice. Wait, you got a job as a postman? <gasps> congratulations. Oh, congratulations on the new job. That's so exciting. Oh, you've had teens and young adult co-workers think you were their age. Yeah, it, for me, it's mostly 
people seem to think I'm in my early 20s. And um, I've not been in my early 20s for a while. But it, it's it's like uh, I've been friends with, with Ghost Aficionado for the longest time. We've been friends for ages. But it's so funny because he talks to me and he's like, I know we've been friends for years, but in my mind you are always 24. Because I met you when you were 24, so you are always that age to me. Or, or 26? Might have been 26. Either way, I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just permanently mid-twenties, and I'm happy with that. Because <laughs> I'm full of youthful energy. <laughs> All this youthful energy I have as I nap every day. <laughs> oh. At least I don't have back pain. That's the one thing I'm really lucky about. I hear so many people, as they get older, they start to talk about back pain, but I've, I've not had that problem yet. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Oh, eternally 17. See, there's so many people who do like the forever 17 thing. But then I think back on when I was 17 and I don't think I would want to be forever 17. I'd want to be like forever 24. I feel like 24 is a good age. <laughs> I'm just going to like permanently set my age as 24. That feels like a good one. Uh, I could be any age between 20 and 60. I, I hope you don't think I'm 60. <laughs> I can tell you I'm I'm very far away from 60. That's 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 like him. <laughs> closer to my mother than me. <laughs> oh, Flint, you've had back pain as of last week. Oh no. Oh, neck pain. Oh, I I hope it eases soon. I hope it doesn't stick around. Yeah, I'm I'm generally lucky. I don't I don't have back pain, but I also have a really nice ergonomic chair as well. So when I'm sitting in my chair, I don't have to worry about... I, I say I don't have to worry about slouching. I definitely slouch. I slouch in my seat all the time. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, you're nearly 30 and your plan to celebrate is to become Tingle. Wait, yes. That's the best plan. That's the best plan. Because say I'm 24 and something months old. Yeah. <laughs> I could do. But then that would give away my actual age. What if I just say I'm 24 and a bit? I don't have to specify the bit. Like, it's, it's... It's it's a bit. I can probably keep that going until I get to, like, 48. Because then it would be double, so it's not a bit anymore. But anything less than double, I think I could get away with it. I think I could do that. I'm, I'm 24 and a bit. Uh, don't, don't worry about the bit. <laughs> That's not important. <laughs> uh, I'm... 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 I'm younger than you. Uh, Yes. I'm I'm definitely younger than you. Yes, keep keep thinking that. That is fine. Yes. I'm definitely younger than you. Hi. <laughs> Wait, how many years is 69 months? Wait, I don't know. 69 12 24 36 48 60. That's like 5 years. Five and three quarter years? Yeah, 69 months is like five and three quarters. Yeah. Five years, nine months. Yeah, I did maths. Are you proud of me? <laughs> me just counting in my head like 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. And then a nine. <laughs> no, it's 72 months. Oh, you missed it. You missed it by three months. That's a shame. But, um... I, I will just say, if anyone is really, really curious about my age, like, if anyone wants to keep the illusion alive, then just don't listen. But if you do want to know how old I actually am, I did turn... Was it four? Yeah, I turned four in cat years last year. So um, if you, if you look up a chart for, for cat years to human years... <laughs> For like cat ages, then you will get the number. But don't don't say the actual number. I will I will tell you off. It's it's not real. I'm not really that old. <laughs> like I am, but I'm not. If you know what I mean. <laughs> also, Maple Milk. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome, welcome on in. Um, I've been streaming for half an hour and I still haven't started the game. Sorry. <laughs> it's yeah, it's 24 and a bit. 
it's it's a bit it's a bit more than 24 yeah <laughs> but yeah I, th I think i do surprise people i still remember when i got my my last pair of glasses when i went to the opticians we were i was getting ready to pay to get my glasses and the the, the woman who was working there said to me oh and if you're a student you can get a discount and I just kind of looked at her with a smile and I was like I wish I wish I was a student it's been a while and then she looked at my uh, date of birth on my thing and she was like oh I'm so sorry I, th I, th <laughs> I thought you were way younger <laughs> uh, it's so funny though because I, th I think a lot of it too a lot of it too happens because uh, I go I, I go with my mum to a lot of places because I don't know how to drive and she drives me because she's wonderful and amazing. And my mum also looks a lot younger than she actually is. So when people see us together, they, they kind of presume that our combined age is lower. <laughs> Should have bluffed my way into a discount. I I was kind of tempted to, but they, they ask for student ID and I obviously don't have that. <laughs> That's why it was like, if, if you're a student, you can show your ID and get a discount. And I was like, uh, um, a little, I'm, I'm, I'm a little past like student age, unless I was a mature student. I mean, there, there are a lot of people doing education at later ages now as well. So, so like there is that too, but I could tell she meant like, she thought I was in my early twenties. <laughs> But yes, that's exactly. I am. I am four years old in cat years, specifically in cat years. Do not ban me, Twitch. I am not underage. <laughs> I need to specify that every time. <laughs> Do not ever just say that I'm four years old because uh, Twitch doesn't understand jokes. Like, <laughs> like there was a, there was a time a little while ago where somebody somebody said for their chat to say as a joke that they're 12 years old or something and loads of people started getting banned for being not old enough to use twitch <laughs> so always specify the cat use ah uh, but yeah oh you just looked it up and you also turned four in cat years oh rika same age high five high five but oh i, sh I should have it would have been funny if i could have lagged my way to a discount but I don't know I already got a partial discount anyway so I I was I was just like yeah I'll, I'll just buy the glasses it's fine and they're really nice glasses because it's you see these glasses I have on my model these are my real life glasses these are the glasses I wear it's these ones and I love them I I used to have rectangular glasses for the longest time just because I liked seeing other people wearing rectangular glasses, so I was like, well, I will wear them too. But then I tried these on simply because the the amazing woman at the optician who I was talking to said, have you tried some rounder glasses? I think they'd suit you. So I tried them on just on a whim, like, I don't think they'll suit me. And then I put them on and I was like, these, these are my glasses. I should have been wearing these my whole life. <laughs> I'm like ready to embrace the librarian look. <laughs> but yeah, oh, may I should keep the glasses on actually. If I'm going to be doing reading, it makes sense to have my glasses on. But yeah, oh, and Destiny Kim too. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Spouse just left for work, so you're watching stream to have company this morning. Oh, glad to hear it. Hopefully, I can be good company for you. Welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm the kind of cat that would be like about to commit some mischief and the mischief is switching the pieces of the salt and sugar. <laughs> yeah, I just moved the, the entire pots around. Like nobody will ever guess this. Also, no, no spark, no I spark. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you enjoy your time here. Welcome. I really should start the game, shouldn't I? It's, I, I, I always get distracted. I don't know, I like the chatting. I feel like tomorrow is going to be a very chatty stream too because I've I've scheduled Infinite Craft as my stream for tomorrow, but my plan is basically just I want to get worm on a string. And then I then we're just gonna see what happens and chat. So it's it's gonna be a good stream. <laughs> but yes, there is actually a game this time, and I do want to actually play it. Cause I've been meaning to play this for the longest time. It's been out for a while. 
And I want to play this so that I can start twofold as well. I really want to play twofold. <laughs> it's true. With me, all streams are just chatting streams. It's like no matter how hard I try, I, I will I will start playing a game and something will be mentioned and then we just have a conversation. But that's why I do streaming. That's why I like this. I, I love just chatting with everyone. It's like if I just wanted to play a game without anything added to it, I would simply play a game offline. Like streaming means it's it's like a shared experience. It's more fun. It's more fun that way. Anyway, let's click new game. I'm going to hope that the audio levels are okay because I've been through the settings and I think I've gotten them all right, but I may need to adjust some voice volumes because they're like, you, you adjust each one individually. We'll see how it goes. Uh, at this point, I should do a stream that's a, a, a mock of a morning TV show. Oh, that, that would be fun, but I don't know if I'd, I don't know if I'd be able to like talk long enough for that. <laughs> It's the main reason why I play games as well, because I feel like I'd run out of conversation and things to talk about, and then I'd just sit here like, uh, what now? <laughs> what now is new game. I'm excited. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Half an hour in. Oh, it's so pretty. The first snow of the year should be a comforting sight, yet this carries a different feeling when so far from home. Winter has always been my favorite time of the year, but the joy of warm fires and upcoming holidays is missing. There's only a month left to go until the season begins in earnest, but I can't feel any of the usual excitement. The coming winter will be the first I've spent away from my family, after all. It's just me now, standing alone on a concrete balcony and looking out onto a grey sky. Hey, Allison! Aren't classes soon? That's a little loud, maybe. <laughs> I may have to turn the voices down a tiny bit. Who was that? I don't know. Hey, this is Rose speaking. Hey, this is Rose speaking. Is this thing working? Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Uh, hello? We'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't know what the voices, voice levels are going to be like. Uh, love her voice. Me too. Me too. I was going through trying to adjust the, the volume levels before the stream. And as I was doing it, I was just there listening to the, the voice clips like... These people have amazing voices. I love this. Hey, Allison! Aren't classes soon? A woman's barking from down below breaks me out of my thoughts. Her familiar figure clad in leather stares up, snow heaped on the rusted shovel in her hands. Looks like the heating's died again. The inside of the apartment no warmer than out there. This new home might be a little shabby, but at least it's ours. A quick glance at my phone as I walk to get my coat and bag confirms her to be right. The, morning, the morning's message from a friend still showing on the screen. Oop. <gasps> Ooh, curious. Oh, you know there's a throw thing at me, Redeem, but... You feel like nobody ever uses it, because why would we throw something at Luri? Well, see, the thing is, with the throw something at me redeem, sometimes you can throw dinosaur nuggets at me. And I think that's why most people use it, because there are dinosaur nuggets in there. But uh, it, there's also cats. There's also cats and dice. <laughs> there are many things you can throw at me. But uh, it's okay, because I have a very resilient head. As should be apparent by how many monster cans have been thrown at it. <laughs> but, uh, the... Oh, and sweeties as well. There's so many nice things. Oh, and nugs! Thank you for brushing my hair. I get my hair brushed out. Things being thrown at me, we can... We can clean it up. Uh, personally, a fan of trying to find a way to say Xander and Cube and D20 in the same sentence. Thank you. Yes, that does drop things on my head. 
I think uh, if you say roll as well, it also drops things on my head. Uh, almost didn't notice the hair change. Yeah, it's like, it's either like the brushed out, smoothed down approach or like slightly ruffled up, sticking out. It's it's from the, the different outfits, like the... The the messy like ruffled one is from my magical girl look, and then this is like my my default casual outfit look. <laughs> uh, hold on a second, I I gotta grab something quickly. Sorry about that. I I forgot to get myself a non-monster drink as well. <laughs> so now I have a can of Sprite as well. I I was I was feeling like my throat was a little bit tickly and I was like, well, I'll just have a drink of not monster and then I realized I did not have a drink of not monster. So now I have Sprite as well. I have Sprite too. <laughs> Addy, hello. Welcome, welcome. First snow. Oh, did your internet freeze? No, I was just reaching over for a drink. Hi! How's it going? Oh, and thank you for the 39 months, too. Your sub survives. Thank you, New Zealand, I think. <laughs> thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? I hope you had a, a lovely holiday. Welcome. And Space Dinosaurus as well. Welcome in. Welcome to First Snow. I've, I've gone through about five lines so far. Um... It's one of those days. You know what? I'm just going to have some monster as well because I can. Because nobody can stop me. But I'm so excited to play this. I've I've been meaning to play it for so long. And I was trying to think of what to do this week. And with it being Lesbian Visibility Week as well, I was like, well, it's the perfect opportunity. It's the perfect excuse. It's been so long since I played a Yuri game. It's about time. <laughs> so yeah, you need sleep, but it's first snow. I'm glad you were able to pop in. And it sort of paid off because it has partial voices now. Yeah, I waited for the updates. That's, that was definitely my intention. And it's definitely also the reason why I haven't played without a voice yet. Because <laughs> it's not because I keep running out of time to do it. It's because I'm waiting for the for the Kickstarter to finish. <laughs> <laughs> is is the Kickstarter still running? Hold on. Where is it? Yeah, it's still got twelve days to go. Uh, let me let me do a a cheeky little a little plug. <laughs> yeah, Kickstarter's still running, but the voice is alive. Yeah, I know, I know. It's so exciting. I was looking at the voice cast, just like, oh yes, I'm so excited for it. Uh, it's the extra stories and stuff that'll be added later. I see. Anyway, uh, check out Without a Voice if you like Dark Yuri. I played it when it came out a, a while ago. And has it really been four years? No. No, I refuse to accept the passing of time, please. But I, I played, yeah, I, oh, I played it before it came out. Yeah, I was, I helped with a, like, beta testing. I found, I found some typos and stuff. <laughs> and the, it's, it's such an amazing game. It's, it's, it's very dark. It has some very, very dark endings, but I, I'm here for that, honestly. But it's, it's so good. It's such a good game. But yeah, I I was one of the, the first people to back it. I backed it as soon as the Kickstarter started. <laughs> I was I was like, there's no way I'm not backing this. It's been eight years since announcement. No. No, that's no. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. I'm going to do something I might regret. Hold on, where are our DMs? <laughs> Will I regret this? Da da da.
Yeah, I'm seeing us talking about it in early 2019. <laughs> yeah, it's early 2019 when we were talking about Without a Voice. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm looking away. I'm looking away. That's five years ago. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really good game. And I'm I'm so happy to see that the Kickstarter went so well as well. It, it got funded like immediately pretty much immediately and it's already so far over the the goal amount it makes me so happy because it's i i know how hard everyone's worked on it and it's it's really good yeah it was 40 minutes because i i sent you a message when it got funded <laughs> cuz you were still asleep i think <laughs> i was like just say so you know it got funded in 40 minutes <laughs> but yeah it's 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 a really good game it's it's a really good game and Ace, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome on in, welcome to uh, just chatting with a side of video game. <laughs> oh, goodness, uh, I should actually play the game. But thank you so much for stopping in before you go to bed, Addy. I'm so glad. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited too. I'm excited for, for the goodies from that. But at the moment, we have First Snow and Big News. Here we go. Enjoy the first snowing and then the two folding. I will. Thank you. We got the, the two fold Tuesdays. I'm sorry. It doesn't have the the alliteration when I say it. <laughs> but I'm so excited for it. Oh, it's like one of the tasks in Helldivers 2. It was meant to last a week and people completed it in 12 hours. I love that. The power of uh, democracy and cooperation. Yeah, Twofold Tuesday. I'm so sorry for being British. <laughs> Earlier we were like, we could just say uh, Twofold Tuesday, and I was like, that's that's the most cursed thing I've ever said. <laughs> oh, love how one of the official first snow merch is a hydro flask. That's so perfect, though. Also, can I just say, I love the little the little phone charm on this phone as well. I miss the days when I could attach charms to my phone. I... I remember having phones with the little, like, the little two holes in that you could just slide the little phone strap through. And I would make these abominations of about 20 straps all attached to each other. I'd just have this cluster of phone charms. Like, I'm pretty sure the charms were more heavy than the phone itself. <laughs> but I miss that. I want to attach things to my phone again. I guess I need to try and get a case that's got, like, attachable bits to it. Also, multi-gamer GR, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Twofold Tuesday. Choo-choo. Little kisses. Uh, did I see the axolotl plushies? I don't know if I did. I'll have to check afterwards. I gotta check afterwards. Yeah, we had a hype train earlier, so it's also choo-choo, twofold Tuesday. Choo-choo. Oh, you moved on to bags. Yeah, most of mine are on my bags now. It's my, my keys and my bag have so many key rings and charms attached <laughs> right anyway let's let's actually play the game again though i'm i, I promise i will be playing this <laughs> oh here we go the idea of big news at this of all times fills me with worry i'm already too busy just trying to keep up with my new life and we got messages here saying, big news, Ali. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Yay, yay, yay. Tell you later in bio. Winky face. Yay, yay, heart, heart. This is how I message. This is how I message people. I just stick loads of emojis in. <laughs> but good night, Addy. I hope you rest well. With time marching on, I quickly slip the phone back into my coat and set off for the stairs. I shouldn't have a problem making it to class if I keep a good pace. This is such a nice house, too. I, I really love this poster of base. Uh, I don't know what that says. It's fine. The busily shoveling woman is still working away, her efforts obvious to see. The snowfall's been impressive for a single night, but a good amount's already been cleared, her heavy breathing easily visible in the cold air. 
Keeping a brisk pace, as much to get to my classes on time as it is to try and warm myself up, I try to wave a quick goodbye. It's obvious she won't let me go without giving her two cents, though, as she puts her shovel against the wall and takes a good stretch. Morning, Rose. Working hard already? Hey, someone's gotta do it. Not like those useless lumps will. <laughs> I love her already. I love all of these characters already. Rose jerks her head towards the apartments. She's not really wrong, but her usual tactlessness is on full display. You all bundled up? Looks like winter's coming early going by the paper. I'll be fine, don't worry. Just take it easy on the way there, right? I will. A weak smile is her response as I start off down the road. She knows that I'm right. This is hardly the first exchange we've had like this. Every other morning, Rose comes up with something or other to definitely not be concerned about. I don't mind, though. That kindness is one of her better traits. I think that's really sweet. <laughs> the weather's been getting steadily colder for a while now. The few workers braving the morning chill are slowly making their way down to the bus station for work. Those staying behind grumbling as they shovel snow from the roofs of their cars and their driveways. There aren't many students down this way as I walk, however. Student accommodation filled up fast, and the nearby apartments were all rented out soon after that. Thank goodness for a family friend offering to let me live with them. Helpful as Rose may be, there's still some sense of being a foreigner. It's only been two months since I moved in and started classes at college, my circle of high school friends and boisterous family home turning overnight to a cramped apartment shared between Rose and I. Ah, oh, quite a change. Quite a lot to get used to. As the school buildings come into view, I join the tired masses staggering through the gates and towards their classes. Much as I might worry, I know I'm not alone. I'm sure many of the students around me right now are going through exactly the same thing. It's only now that I realize I haven't had my usual morning coffee back at the apartment to wake myself up. Oh no. <laughs> With a little time before bio biology class starts, I'll have to content myself with a quick can of soda from the vending machine. Hey, they, have they got a monster in there? <laughs> you got a monster in your vending machine? Heading over to the union building on the way to class, the morning chills driven away the usual gaggle of those sitting on the stairs and blocking the entrance. Rubbing my hands together to summon some warmth, I head on in. There's the vending machine. With the heating being cranked right up, you could almost forget it's winter outside. My relief doesn't last long, however. My heart nearly stops as a deafening clatter comes from ahead. A couple walking arm in arm skirt around the edge of the room, doing their best to not draw the attention of a blonde woman nearby. She grumbles loudly before delivering another kick to the poor, abused vending machine in front of her. I'm guessing a drink has got stuck. It's the Hydro Flask! Woo! I hate situations like these. Either I do nothing and feel bad for not helping, or step in and deal with the stress that comes with confronting someone involved. As I try to work my way out of this, my heart freezes as the woman locks eyes with me. I must make for a pitiable sight with my hands raised defensively in front of me, her rage calming as she settles for staring daggers at the machine. Resigned to my fate, I reluctantly shuffle towards her as my heart beats wildly. As I do, her dour look is only made all the more intimidating from the bags under her eyes. She's a mood, honestly. Oh, is the hydro flask based on the vending machine? I love that. Is, is it like the, the drink? <laughs> oh, I want that. She's just like me, for real, for real. Hi, Brindley! Honestly, relatable. I'm, I'm... I'm also like that before I've had my caffeine. Is... something wrong? <sighs> Stupid thing ate my money. No can or change at all. Threw five bucks in there, too. I love that the, the, it's listed as, she is mad girl. She angry. Uh, the vending machine here messes up sometimes. It's usually better to go through to the cafeteria for drinks. 
They should fix it then. They should. It's true, they should. I think I need Mad Girl's voice to be a tiny bit quieter. Is this thing working? Yeah, that should work. They should fix it then. Oh, it's just a white hydro flask with the word drink on it. That's incredible. That is perfect. I love that. Oh, I need to get one. Recounting the event only stirs to serves to stir up her annoyance. Another foot being jammed into the accused. The horrible noise makes me cringe again. And I'm starting to wor worry she'll hurt herself as much as the machine itself. Don't kick it again! Why not? Things already broken, isn't it? Uh, I want to say that I'd rather not get in trouble with the staff, but I get the feeling that wouldn't faze her. Reviewing my options as quickly as I can, there's only one solution I can think of that might settle her down. I probably shouldn't, but if nobody's paying much attention... I thought I was voice acting it. No, this is, this is voice acted now. Uh, it wasn't voice acted when it came out, but they've added patches since it came out. So it's voiced now. <laughs> but no, that's not me. I wish it was. I'm, I'm honored that you think it possibly could be. <laughs> <sighs> Which drink did you want? She gives me a curious look after I managed to speak, squeak the words out, but eventually points. I was just grabbing a lemonade on the way out. Could you turn around for a moment? Allison, what are you doing? With great reluctance, she turns away as I ask. I doubt she could work out what I'm doing by looking, but it's better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> be gay, do crimes. No, no, Alison, be careful. It's lesbian visibility week. You're, you're visible. <laughs> no, I, I have a lovable and soothing voice. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad you think that. I, I can be, I can be not lovable and soothing though if I want to be. I can be much more harsh if I want to be. I can I can be very, very not kind if I want to be. I'm not always just comfy. I can also I can also do voices kind of like this. Although I don't know. I guess some people would find that comfy. In a way. Uh, anyway, uh, no crimes. Crimes are illegal. <laughs> Closing my eyes and silently mouthing the right sequence to make sure I don't mess it up, I go about my business. With any luck, the software inside hasn't been updated since I last tested this. Are you hacking the vending machine? Allison! Wow! A long sigh of relief passes my lips as the vending machine rattles away, loudly dumping a can into the small opening. Holding the can before the blonde woman's face as she turns back around, my reward is a somewhat impressed expression as she takes the item. Now that she has her drink and had a chance to get her frustration out of her system, she seems to be calming a little. Her height doesn't help her look any less intimidating though. Is she tall? Tall women, yes. Oh, you enjoy my different voices. I'm glad you think so. I've, I've got to say, I, I do. I love when games are fully voiced, but I also like when they're not as well. So I have the excuse to to do the voices myself. <laughs> With that, I consider the matter settled as I nod and begin to walk away. Only as I leave do I realize my heart's racing after having to deal with her. Hey, wait up! Reaching for my instinctual response. I pretend not to hear her as I skitter away and disappear back through the entrance. <laughs> Escape. Scared, intimidated by woman, I must run. The cold hits me like a wall as I leave through the door. I hardly mind, heaving a sigh to steady myself as I head towards classes. I only remember now that I'd intended to grab a drink myself, but fiddling with the machines probably made me too late. The empty campus grounds make me nervous, making me take my, ha my phone in hand to check the time. A quick glance is all that's needed to send me dashing towards the, the, toward the sciences building. 
oh, don't be late for class because you hacked a vending machine. <laughs> Curasyllabus, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome in, it's Yuri time. It's going to be one of those days. Panting from the run, I stagger into biology class with as much composure as I can muster. The sight seems to make a pitiable impression on the professor, who merely nods for me to take a seat. Setting my bag next to me, I quickly take the seat next to a now familiar figure. The diminutive caprice shoots a grin and a wave as I sit, earning a smile in return. It's nice to see a friendly face. I've heard, I've heard many good things about her. As the professor gets back to lecturing, I grab my still pristine textbook from my bag, flicking through to the bookmark I'd added for where we currently are. Movement from the corner of my eye takes my attention, a ripped piece of sketch pad sliding before me. <laughs> oh no, your perfect attendance record! What happened? I love these little doodles. I love these doodles. <laughs> this is so cute. Her writing is surrounded by various doodles and scribbles already on the page. I should pay attention to the class, but it isn't that easy to wave Caprice off. <laughs> oh, Jack, hello, welcome. Oh, the last game you saw in a classroom, Doki Doki. Don't worry, this is nothing like that. Doki Doki is an outlier in visual novels. Don't, don't worry about it. Hello, welcome, welcome. I love the little otter, it's so cute. I get the feeling she may like otters. Then again, this is largely reviewing what we covered in high school right now. It probably wouldn't hurt to chat with her a bit. No, this is actually wholesome. This is this is just a visual novel. This is this is Yuri. It's Yuri time. It's it's lesbian visibility week, so it's Yuri time. <laughs> but no, don't worry, this isn't secretly a horror game if if i'm ever playing a horror game i will i will make it clear <laughs> i don't want to ever like scare anyone into something like the only time i would ever play a horror game and not tell anyone it's a horror game would be if i also didn't realize and i would then be in the same boat <laughs> but no this is this is this is a yuri time <laughs> but leary doki doki also had yuri different that, that that's that's just her name it's this is different just stop it <laughs> yes it's it's utterly adorable it is i love that i also love the little confused doodle too as well just like thinking what happened but yeah we're, we're just reviewing what we covered in high school right now it probably wouldn't hurt to chat with her a bit oh wait adding to the doodles i love that no, come back. I didn't get to read it. I didn't get to read it. Stop it. Don't don't go away. Got held up with someone. I love I love just adding to the doodles as the note goes. <laughs> I write a brief reply and a little accompanying drawing before sliding it back over. A quick look to the professor making sure the coast is clear as he drones on. <laughs> Just replying with an with a drawing. Just a drawing of hmm. Hmm. Caprice's reply as the page is passed back makes me grimace. I should have expected that. I almost reply before noticing the professor casting a knowing glance my way as he continues with his teaching. He knew what we were doing, didn't he? Yeah, if if my experience is anything to go by, teachers are more perceptive than you think. <laughs> Thinking better of it, I tuck the page beneath my textbook and start listening properly. I don't need to look at Caprice to know her reaction. I hardly think worse of her for it, though. Swapping doodles during these classes was how she broke the ice with me when I was just another lonely freshman student. A shy one, at that. Given we're still friends, I suppose it worked. Sneaking a glance back at the page beneath my book reminds me how well the mercurial girl can draw, at least compared to me. She mentioned one time that she's also taking art classes, which must be paying off. Before I know it, the class starts winding up. The other students begin to get distracted as time goes on, the professor soon starting to wrap things up in response. 
No sooner do the words come from his mouth that, that the class is over does the loud clatter of people packing books and pens into their bags and backpacks begin. Oh, the sentences in this game are so long. <laughs> There's a lot of very long sentences. I feel like I have to read ahead to figure out what's going on before I start reading it. Caprice wastes no time in talking as the two of us do the same. I was worried you were sick today, Allie. It was only a couple of minutes. Yeah, I, I was a bit late. I wasn't late. No, no, she was a bit late. For you, that's a lot. I love her already. <laughs> uh, no, no. What happened? Huh? Did I accidentally click something that brings up the menu? I don't know how I did that. <laughs> she has a point. It's likely I was more concerned about this than the teacher. After near-perfect attendance through high school, though, the last thing I want is to set a bad expectation from the staff here. Oh, thank you for the hydrate, too! Let me have another sip of my white monster. Have a sip here. I'm gonna have two, actually. I even got the right can. Yeah, I decided to have the the white can today because snow, first snow, snow is white. <laughs> uh, I've I've only got I only got like a four pack of the the white monster. I've only got like four of them, but I've I've still got quite a bit of Rosa left. So we're gonna be pink monster for a while. Especially now I got the gift from Barb too. We're gonna fully embrace the pink. It is pink monster time. I'm excited. <laughs> Setting that aside, I'm not sure the professor really likes us passing notes to each other in class. Oh, don't worry about him. He's cool. We've talked. Hehe. <laughs> well, if you're sure, I do like seeing your drawings. Me too. Aw, and I like seeing yours. I'm glad you're here today, actually. I've been thinking, and I need your help with something. Oh? We're making an art club. But there's already an art. Wait, why is there a we there? <laughs> How am I part of this? Ah. You're a founding member, of course. I, I am, am I? Oh, hey! The new art club achievement. Get wrapped up in Caprice's enthusiasm. Nice. <laughs> why do I get the feeling Caprice has been mulling this over in her head for ages? Plans seem to already be in motion for her, and I'm not sure what choice I have left in this. I'm left to mull things over as I take my coat from the back of my seat and slip it on, the two of us taking our bags and joining the others and heading out into the hallway. I hadn't even considered joining a club, let alone starting one up with all the work that it entail. That sigh, oh my goodness. I can help, but I have my schoolwork to concentrate on, you know. Getting a scholarship wasn't easy, and I'd rather not waste it. Uh... Ah, right! You were majoring in chemistry, weren't you? Here we go, this is the partial voice acting. Because uh, one of the things that was listed is that it's partially voice acted, so the main scenes are all fully voice acted, but the rest of it is... It's just partially voice acted. It's just like sounds and stuff. So now I get to do voices. Yeah. Ah, right. You were majoring in chemistry, weren't you? I give a nod, albeit a slightly guilty one. Not that I'd dare have told my family, but I only picked chemistry because I happened to be good at it. Like most things in life, I just went with the default option before me. At least Capri seems to have moved on from me being a part of this. I have enough going on in my life between moving to a new home and studying for college to think about spending time in clubs and things. Oh, but, but Ali, your extracurriculars. <laughs> I'm surprised you're taking biology classes, to be honest. Aren't you more into art? Um... It's hard to pick a favorite, but right now, bio is just the entry-level stuff. It's so boring, right? I talked to the professor, though, and we're getting into some marine life chapters soon. That seems very specific. Yeah! It's the 
most interesting part. I gotta focus hard when we get there. I plan on making it my major. So even a free spirit like Caprice has something she's working towards. It seems I can't get away from how much of a mess my life is with no idea what I want to do for a career. I've, this is too real. This is so real. <laughs> oh, I relate to Alison so much. Biology. Biology was always my least favorite science when I was in school. But I don't know how much of that is just because I had an awful... No, no. No, it was physics I hated. Yeah, I really liked chemistry. I was kind of indifferent towards biology. I hated physics because our physics teacher was just an absolutely awful person. <laughs> I could not stand him. But uh, I always did pretty well in sciences. Funnily enough as well, I, I realized people wouldn't believe this with how much I fumble math stuff as well. I was always really good at maths as well. Oh, I'm Chibi! I'm Chibi now! Akire, hello! Thank you for chibiing me. Wait, I don't have my blanket now though, do I? Hold on, I don't remember if I have this set up properly. I do! I do, I set it up properly! Yay! Hello, I'm Chibi now. <laughs> Thank you for the Chibi redeem. Welcome, welcome. Oh, you scored higher than... Oh, you scored highest in biology. I see you. Yeah, I, I really liked chemistry because... I think it's because it was a lot of, like, formulas and... Like, you put a thing with a thing and a reaction happens. And it's like, it's... It's it's very, very specific. I like things that are specific, like you know what the answer is going to be, like there's a guaranteed answer. <laughs> I don't like when things are more vague. Oh, my mouth's doing the thing again. Why is it doing that? Hold on. Hold on. It's only with the chibi model. It started doing it recently. Every now and then when I'm talking, it just suddenly decides to make me frown. I don't know why. I don't know why it's doing that. That's so strange. Oh, well, well, we'll have to deal with me. I just go like that sometimes. I have no idea why. I will I will fiddle with it during the week. <laughs> I'll try and figure it out. But yeah, I, th I think chemistry was my favorite. And then... Honestly, like, I like physics. I like, like, the idea of physics. I just had a really awful teacher, so I hated physics class. <laughs> and then... Biology, I wasn't as good at, but I had a really nice teacher in biology, so I picked up more from that as well. But yeah, I've, I was never really much of a sciences person anyway. I, <laughs> unless it was computer sciences. I'm good. With, I liked the computer classes. I, I have very fond memories in school of doing like computer classes and getting my work done really, really quickly and just like playing around on Microsoft Paint and drawing pictures <laughs> and then quickly like tabbing back when the teacher came nearby. I would I would always do my work so that I was nearly done. I would leave it so there's like one thing left for me to do and then I would mess around and then when the teacher came back I would fill in like the last few things so it looked like I'd been working the whole time. <laughs> I was I was sneaky. I was sneaky in school. Anyway Seems like I can't get away from how much of a mess my life is with no idea what I want to do for a career. The two of us head outside with our next classes in other buildings. As we do, I- hold on, I'm gonna try something with my chibi model. Very quickly. I'm gonna try. I don't know if this is going to work. But it's worth a try. Right. Let's see if this is any better. Oh, I think I fixed it! Yeah, I fixed it! Okay. Okay, we're good. I fixed my mouth. Yay! I don't know why that randomly changed. I have no idea why it randomly thought I was frowning when I'm not. <laughs> But I fixed it now. We're good. We're good. I fixed it. I don't even know what I did. I, I changed a few toggles. One of them worked. 
Yay! To be fixed. Right, back to game. The two of us head outside with our next classes in other buildings. As we do, I look about warily as students from other classes pass by. I'd rather not bump into that angry woman again. <laughs> Who are you held up with anyway? Bump into a friend? Um, 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 friend? Maybe? Also, Brisket, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome in to First Snow! I'm chibi at the moment, but I will be back to normal soon. But I've got my blanket on for First Snow! <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention too, I changed my, my comfy blanket. I, I chose one with snowflakes on this time instead, to, to match the theme. <laughs> But yes, it is comfy time today. It's it's Yuri time. Happy happy Yuri Tuesday. I'm playing a game I've meant to play for the longest time and I'm finally getting around to it. But uh, welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Bump into a friend? Uh, not quite. That would require there to be another beyond her in the first place. Um, she is about the last person I'd call a friend kind of scary, actually. She might have been asking out of small talk before, but now I have her full interest. With reluctance, I think back to the event. Not sure if you'd know her. Tall, blonde, green eyes, very sharp look with high boots. Kind of pretty? Now that I have time to think it through, she was quite beautiful. In more than her body, too. I liked her sense of fashion. That's kind of gay. You know. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I think I know who you're talking about, actually. Huh? You do? Yep. Our other founding member. Oh. Oh. Okay. She hasn't dropped the idea of me joining at all and now wants her of all people to be part of this. My reaction to the news apparently shows on my face. If we're thinking of the same person, I've seen her around and I've heard some things. She floats around the art department a lot, so the other art club tried to grab her. She didn't even present, pretend to consider it, just told them to get lost. Which means she's still free. <laughs> If she already rejected one club, why would she join another? Exactly! Because it's led by me, of course! <laughs> I love her. I love her so much. I just sigh. <sighs> I need to get to my next class. Being late for one today is already too much. Resigned to my fate, I wave goodbye and start to head off. Not more than a couple of seconds later, I hear her calling out behind me. Ah! Ah! Before you go! Meet me on the second floor of the arts building after classes, okay? We need to get started on finding a club room and stuff. Looks like I'm going to be part of this scheme whether I like it or not. Dealing with that woman again makes me shudder, but she'll surely just reject Caprice and that'll be that. Right? <laughs> right? Thank you for the poster check. Let me, let me sit up straight. Ah! Big stretch. Big stretch for a small bean. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure I'm sitting up properly. There we go. Waha, that's better. But yeah, she'll, she's just going to reject Caprice and it'll be fine, right? Right? <laughs> walking through the halls, uh, walking through the halls at these hours is a whole different experience to the normal hustle and bustle. I love the tree! Twee! It's all decorated! Oh, this is so sweet. I really wish I had had the chance to play this in December. <laughs> oh, end of last year was just an absolute nightmare for me. I really wanted to play this last December, but I, d I didn't get the chance. I didn't have the chance. <laughs> Where students gossiped in the hallways, organized dates, and hurried between classes with arms full of overpriced textbooks, there's now a sweet silence. All to be seen at this hour is the odd straggler thinking more about dinner than schoolwork. Well, 
them and the Christmas decorations. I get the feeling that the Arts and Humanities staff takes some enjoyment out of getting ready for the occasion. Much like the school itself, the decorations look a bit ragged, probably hauled out every year for decades. With little to do until Caprice shows up, exploring the arts building and peering into this classroom or that winds up passing the time. Heading up the stairs, I take my time strolling through the hallways. Everything is bathed in the orange of the sunset, the quiet of the halls giving the building a serene atmosphere. It's calming after the day's events. I love this. I love this up here. <laughs> I love that you can tell the hat's been put on afterwards. It's... <laughs> Christmas! It isn't until a good few minutes pass that I find the first thing of much interest. A single room with the door left open. With curiosity getting the better of me, I stroll up the hallway and gingerly step inside. At least I can close the door for them. With only a handful of chairs actually set against tables, I'd think the room... Uh, oh, I'm back to normal. I am large again now. Hello! <laughs> Thank you for the chibi. I am I am now large again. But I still have my blankie. Ooh. Pretty. With only a handful of chairs actually set against tables, I'd think the room unused if not for the paints, papers, and sketchbooks strewn across the tops of the cupboards. If Caprice wanted a club room, this would be as good as any. As I peer about, the sight of one particular canvas amongst it all catches my attention. The painting of a woman standing in water sits drying on the easel, the painter's utensils still lying about. Stepping up to look at it, I'm surprised by how old-fashioned it is. Like the kind of oil painting that would be drawn a century or so ago. Every brush stroke and line has depth to it, the painter's every movement clearly visible. I find myself struck by its beauty, time slipping by me as I stare. Her soft-looking skin and flowing locks of hair are enough to make me wistfully sigh, her face telling of her free spirit. It's beautiful. My thoughts are suddenly interrupted by the creaking of the door opening further, causing me to whip around in fright. The uh, uh oh, uh oh, oopsie, um. <laughs> The particular person standing in the doorway looking straight at me does nothing to settle my racing heart, much less the fact that I'm not even supposed to be in here. Sorry, I mean... I quickly try to stammer out something, but the words keep catching in my throat. Hmm. Oh, it's Vending Machine Girl. Um... Allison. Hi. Mallow. Hi. So you do have a name. I'm Eileen Turner, for what it's worth. I quickly nod. For all my nervousness about maybe being somewhere I shouldn't, Eileen doesn't actually seem to care that much. In fact, she almost looks bored. If this room's used by a bunch of people, there's a good chance she might not know I'm an intruder. <laughs> she is gorgeous. Yeah, me too. Just... Gay panic, just I, I would just stand here and just be like, Oh, oh yeah, hi, hello, hello, attractive tall woman. How is how is it going? Well, I'm going to close the place up. If you want anything, you should grab it. Hmm. Not that I think you have anything here. The cold edge to her voice freezes my entire body. W wait, I mean. I can explain. Eileen narrows her eyes and crosses her arms, waiting for my response. A response which is interrupted by a familiar voice booming from the entrance. Oh, thank God, Caprice. Please save me. Allie! Hey, Allie! I don't think I've ever been so glad to see Caprice. Given this art club business was her idea, it's for the best if she explains it all. Eileen doesn't look impressed as Caprice skips into the room, uh, looking this way and that like some tourist. Good work! You already found us a room! This'll work perfectly! Ugh. So Caprice got herself a new goon. I wish I was surprised. Yeah! Yep! Yeah. You're not supposed to agree with that. 
And what do you want this room for, pray tell? Well... The current art club is awful, I'm sure you know. So instead of dealing with them, we're going to form our own! And it looks like you and Ali have found us our club room! I see what's happened here now. Caprice engineered the situation so we'd all be here together. This isn't a very subtle scheme, but that's all the more reason for her to have come up with it. I try my best to backpedal in a way that doesn't upset either. I just thought we'd draw a bit. Didn't mean to intrude. Seriously? I got permission to use this room to practice my painting, not for some dumb club. Cool! Sorry, but it's two against one. Majority rule! I didn't say anything about a club. Well, too bad. This is a dictatorship. <laughs> Eileen the dictator. I see you. Eileen stands her ground, staring down her opponent as I try my best to stay well out of their argument. <laughs> oh, they're both so headstrong, though. This is going to be interesting. Ah. Her resolve doesn't last long, though. Realizing the futility of it, she eventually heaves a sigh at Caprice's antics. I can't say I wholly blame her. I just want to work in peace. That isn't too much to ask. That isn't much to ask. Come on! But I'm going. I'm not going to get anything more done today, anyway. Eileen turns to me after picking up her coat from a desk and pulling her scarf around her, po rather pointedly being finished with Caprice. Bye. See you around, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. At a loss for how I'm supposed to respond to such an unenthusiastic tone, I'm left standing silently uh, by I'm left standing silently by as a frustrated Eileen throws her backpack over her shoulder and strides out. Well, that went well. <laughs> Caprice just smiles and shrugs as she looks back to me, the argument they had just moments ago flowing off her like water on a duck's back. Well, that's how it is. I feel like I got dragged into something. I didn't really think that'd work, but it was worth a try. She's not listening to me at all. Am I really just an instrument to try and win this argument between them? No, I can't think that. Caprice is... forceful, but she means well. If this did end up being a club, I'd probably enjoy it. Caprice certainly wouldn't make it dull, and I think if Eileen got to know me, she'd be nicer to me. But I don't want to risk Eileen getting even more annoyed with me. It feels like I've been left to hunker down in a foxhole in no man's land, and all I can do right now is hold my helmet on tight. As the orange of the sunset starts to wane outside, it becomes obvious that nothing more is going to get done today, just as Eileen said. Take care. I'd better head home. It's, it's getting late. See you tomorrow. Catch you later. See ya. If you ever want to draw, feel free to stop by the new club room. Oh, she's just decided it now. This is just the club room now. She, she's decided it. Precisely none of what Eileen said penetrated, did it? Nope. She did not listen. I just give a weak smile as I wave and take my bag, idly wondering if Rose will be cooking something for dinner or bringing home takeout. It's something more heartening to think about than today's efforts, anyway. Ha. <sighs> as I collapse onto the couch and settle in, the deafening sound of silence rushes in. The odd passing car from the street below the apartment only highlights the quiet of the room. Plucking my phone from my pocket after dropping my bag on the cushion beside me, I take quick note of the time. I guess Rose got stuck in traffic. I love the little burb. I love the burb. An annoying train of thought starts up again. Starts up once again as I put it away. One that's crept up on me occasionally ever since moving out, just waiting for when nothing's around to distract me. Kingfisher! Oh, is it a kingfisher? I love that. I don't know much about birds. I can I can just about recognize a pigeon. <laughs> and Robin Redbreast as well, because of like the red. I can I can recognize robins. But I don't know much about birds. 
But, oh no, the thoughts that happen when there's no distractions. I can cope with the schoolwork easily enough. It's mostly just review right now. People like Caprice might be a handful, but they do liven up the day's routine. It's a fair distance to campus from here, but the walk helps keep me fit. The silence. That I can't deal with. Grabbing the remote and flicking on the television at least provides some background noise, but it's no replacement for the sounds of home. <sighs> and I feel like there's something so off with my tracking at the moment. It's not detecting my mouth opening as much as it does. It's not because of my lights breaking, is it? It may be because of my lights breaking. I wonder if I move this. I wonder if this will make a difference. Ow. Oh, mum, mum, Talking, talking. I, th I think that's better, actually. Uh, I I've, I've moved my, my single light bulb. Uh, I can't look to my right now. I will blind myself if I do. But I think the, the lighting's a bit better now. <laughs> and Ryan, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome to Yuri time! <laughs> Home mentioned house flipper required. <laughs> welcome to Yuri time! Hello! Hello, we got women! It's, uh, it's, it's women, it's not Women Wednesday, it's Tuesday. It's, uh, I was trying to think of something, my brain is empty. It is too many beautiful women Tuesday. <laughs> but welcome and thank you for the hydrate as well, Bob. I will have a sip of my drink. And Mari, hello, welcome, welcome. Let's go, let's go, it's first snow time. Good times. Every day of the year is Women's Day to you. That's so true. Me too, honestly. Welcome, welcome, Angrid. Welcome on in. It's very true. Every, every day is Women's Day. It is always a good time to appreciate women. <laughs> but welcome. But yeah, Women Women Tuesday because two women are required for you. That, that's very true. That's very true. But uh, the main reason why I wanted to do this on a Tuesday was because... This is the prequel for a game called Twofold, and I'm going to be playing Twofold afterwards, so I wanted to do Twofold Tuesday. <laughs> so that's why that's why I'm playing this today. But uh, but yeah, we're we're still on the prequel so far, though. We we are not at Twofold yet. We are playing First Snow, which is uh, it's actually a free prequel to Twofold, so you can pick up this game for free. At least I'm pretty sure it's free. I I'll laugh so much if it's not now. I'm. Hold on. Let me double check now. I don't want to be spreading false information. Yeah, it's free. It's free to play. It's a free prequel. So if you if you're checking this out and you you decide, oh, I really like this, you can play it too. You can play it for free. For free. Two 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 fall Tuesday. Two 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 women. Two women on a Tuesday. To fold, uh, fold, fold women. Uh, I don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, women, thank you. Thank you all very much. I, um, I don't know what that was. Uh, where are we? Grabbing the remote and flicking on the television at least provides some background noise, but it's no replacement for the sounds of home. There's no mother busying herself over the cooking pot to welcome me home and ask how my day was. No excitable older brothers fighting about this silly thing or that. No father for me to happily see come home from work. It's just me now. I can imagine how that would be quite, quite lonely. And oh, welcome, welcome! Oh, hey, I was finally able to catch another one of these. I've been following some of the recent games you've played like Case of the Golden Idol and Infinite Craft on YT, but it's been a while since I've caught a stream live. Oh, it has been a while. I'm so glad you could catch this live. Welcome on in. Welcome, welcome. I, I hope you've been doing well. I'm so glad you've been enjoying the VOD still. It's why I always add the VODs to YouTube as well, because it I know that I am... I like watching VODs myself, so I like having those available. But I'm glad you could make it! Thank you so much for the resub for 16 months! Welcome, welcome! I hope you're doing well! Welcome in! It is, it's Yuri Day! It's Twofold Tuesday, but we're not playing Twofold yet, we're playing the prequel, First Snow. But it's Yuri time! Welcome! <laughs> welcome on in! 
Oh, college has been crazy lately. Won't be able to stay long because it's finals week. Oh, that is absolutely understandable. Uh, I hope it goes well for you. I wish, wishing you all the best with your finals. I hope it goes well. But uh, thank you for stopping in as well. I'm glad you could make it. And even if you have to lurk to, to go get some work done too, that is completely fine. I'm glad you could make it. Thank you. But yes, I'm currently playing First Snow, which is the opposite of finals. We're at the start of a semester. <laughs> Uh, I meant I, I wanted to play this in December and I didn't get around to it. So I'm playing it in April now. We're just pretending it's Christmas. <laughs> but yeah, good luck. Good luck with all the finals. And to anyone else as well who's doing like exams and stuff. I All of the best luck from me. I, I wish all of the best luck. <laughs> but yes, I'm currently playing First Snow, which is the, the prequel to Twofold, which is a, a Yuri visual novel. And it, I figured it's, it's been a while since I did a Yuri visual novel. It's very overdue. I've, I've been meaning to do one. So it's time. It's women time. It's always women time. But now especially. <laughs> it's just me now. My fingers roll over the screen in thought as it brings up the lock screen, mindlessly tracing out the cracks in the bottom corner. I could easily call them right now. My mum and dad both made it clear I could ring any time at all. But as I stare at the screen, a deep apathy strikes me. Before college, I thought that with my family and old friends just a phone call away, nothing would feel all that different. Maybe I just couldn't admit to myself how big of a change this would really be. Admitting defeat, the phone ends up on the couch beside me as I watch television. The news is interesting today, so at least it's some distraction from all this. Just when I thought I'd finally found a friend or two in college, it ends up being a mess. Why do people have to be so complicated? Oh uh, yeah, people, right? <laughs> As the door behind me opens, I close my thoughts on the subject. There's no point in mulling things over any further. Hair. Act. Uh, art matters. Begin act one. We did it. We're doing it. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> oh, here we go. I don't see how things could possibly go wrong. With with two people as headstrong as Eileen and Caprice. <laughs> the Saturday's morning air is brisk as I stagger back from the supermarket, hands full with bags. The apartment itself may be nothing to write home about, but it's certainly in a good location. I still don't feel like I've been pulling my weight when it comes to daily life with Rose, but at least I can help with errands like groceries. Her attempts to teach me handiwork skills have been less successful. Even this much has been a learning experience. My parents usually doing the shopping back when I lived with them. Reaching the apartment, I find Rose crouched outside and working on her motorbike. She looks perfectly content as she whiles away her time with tools spread around her, as if a child happily playing with their favorite toys. Hey. Working on the bike again? Hey! Hmm? Oh, hey, that was quick. She levers herself up. Oh my goodness, Maru! It's a Maru raid, hello! Welcome, welcome, how's it going? Welcome on in, how did your stream go? Welcome, welcome, it's Yuri time. Welcome, welcome to Yuri time. Yuri time. We got, we got beautiful women, hi. <laughs> welcome in. What were you doing? It went great, it was a productivity stream. Oh, were you doing like a, like a work stream? Like a, like an accompanying with work kind of stream? I'm glad it went well. I hope you were very productive. Yeah, you saw Yuri time and dashed like a mad lass. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Fellow Yuri appreciators unite. I reach out and shake your hand. Yeah, working together with a task list and stuff. That's so good. I, I feel like I could do with stuff like that to be productive, honestly. <laughs> oh, I, I, need, I need to like hold myself accountable to do productive things, I think. And color clad, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you enjoy your time here. Hi. 
Uh, oh, Bob, think it's time for you to go home. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, give yourself a break. <laughs> Stop thinking in cryptographic stuff. Yeah, g give yourself a rest. I hope the, the trip home goes well. Thank you for stopping in. And oh, you're working on a series of retro gaming articles. <gasps> nice. Ooh. Oh, I'm glad you were productive then. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I might message you about that afterwards. <laughs> thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. But uh, to anyone who's new here from the raid, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink haired cat girl from the UK. And I love comfy games and puzzle games and um, women and... Um... <laughs> and it's Lesbian Visibility Week. Hi. Hello. I'm visible. I'm gay. <laughs> But uh, thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. Yeah, it is! It's Lesbian Visibility Week! Uh, I... I kind of forgot too, but then I saw people talking about it last week, and I was like... Oh, it's the perfect opportunity. It's the perfect excuse for me to actually start another Yuri game. <laughs> but be careful, we can be seen. We can, we can be seen this week. Be very careful. But uh, welcome in, raiders! Oh, uh, the, the axolotl got a monster? Yeah, she's looking after my monster for me. I'm drinking it right now. <laughs> I got a nice can of monster to fuel the brain cells. Oh, thank you for the hydrate too. I guess I'm having another sippy. And a posture check. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. But oh, you got a raid and run. That is absolutely fine. That is completely fine. I stretch as I say. I hope you rest well. I hope you have good lunch. Oh, very late lunch. Oh. <laughs> I hope you have a nice meal. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. Uh, I'll, I'll message you afterwards if I remember. Hopefully I'll remember. I think I will remember. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. Oh, Jack, you're surrounded by lesbians. It's, it reminds me of um the, like, the skit where there's the guy running along the street and it's like, let's go, lesbians, let's go. <laughs> just, just like, I've got a pack of lesbians with me. <laughs> but uh, thank you for the hydrate and posture check as well, Dima. You see my arson? That's impossible because I, I don't commit arson. So I don't know what you're talking about there. And Kurazu as well, hello. Hello, hello. I'm now visible to nearby lesbians. Start running. I, you say that as a joke, but I I would do. I'd just be like, oh, um, um, bye. Um, <laughs> hi, bye. Run away. Run away and hide. <laughs> no arson. Arson is not allowed. If you commit arson, you will be put in timeout. You will, you will be put in the naughty corner and you will have to think about what you did. And you also won't get any dinosaur nuggets, so no arson, okay? <laughs> we in agreement? Thank you. <laughs> no nuggies. Yeah, no dinosaur nuggies if you commit arson. So don't, so don't, don't commit arson. Right, anyway, back to women. I really love Rose. She's great. Uh, she levers herself up with a grunt before pulling back the edge of one bag with a finger to peer in, then another. I'm a little worried as she checks over my work. <gasps> Dima, thank you for gifting Mari a sub. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, we're getting so many Yuri subs today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That counts as a cruel and unusual punishment. No, I, I think the punishment fits the crime there. I think it's fair. And Shura as well. Hello. Welcome, welcome. You heard arson? No, no arson. Arson is not allowed. No arson. Is this happening just because Barb left? Like, as soon as Barb leaves, everyone's like, ah, Barb's gone. We can, we can commit crimes now. That's not the case. I have a sword of my own as well. It is not okay. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but welcome in. Welcome, welcome. I'm playing First Snow. I meant to play this... I've meant to play it for the longest time, but I'm finally getting around to it now in Lesbian Visibility Week. And I already love it. I already love all of the characters. I'm so, I'm so excited. And I got my comfy first snow blanket on too. I say that, it's just a blanket with snowflakes. But I... I, I made it teal. It was originally blue. The original resource I got, it's from a... Hold on. 
let me double check the username to credit. <laughs> uh, it's a free resource by Catboy Mech, who has done a lot of VTuber accessories and like free things. And this was originally more blue, but I, I made it teal. I made it teal because my blanket is teal. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it'd be nice to have the snowflakes for first snow. But yes, we we haven't gotten very far because I keep getting distracted talking about the passage of time. And other things. And school classes. But yeah, I'm 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 really happy to be playing this. <laughs> Yeah, teal's my color. Yes, thank you. What are my thoughts on Rose? Uh, my thoughts on Rose are, uh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello, um, can you, can you shovel my driveway, please? Thank you. I, that's not meant to be like an innuendo or anything. That's, that's like an innocent remark. I'm really weak and I have very weak arm muscles. I, I want her to clear the driveway for me. <laughs> But she's so cool. I all of the characters in this so far are so good. I'm I'm so happy. Ah, uh, she levers herself up with a grunt before pulling back the edge of one bag with a finger to peer in, then another. I'm a little worried as she checks over my work. Where is my cursor gone? My cursor's vanished. Hold on. There it is. Okay, I got my cursor back. Uh, who have I met so far? I've I've met I've met Caprice. I've met Eileen. They've they've had a discussion on whether to make the art club. Um, I've been forcibly roped into that. Uh, we're just at, I've just started Act One though. <laughs> I haven't gone very far so far. It's more it's more been like the the introduction, like the build up. But uh, I hope I got the right groceries. Having to hold my breath as she does isn't exactly helping. I'm still not used to the acrid smell of her smoking, but. Maybe that's a good thing. Oh yeah, that's that's one thing. That that that's a that's a negative point for for Rose in my book. I'm not not a fan of cigarettes. <laughs> good work. Everything we needed and no weird impulse buys. Did we need more window cleaner though? You said to grab necessities if they're on sale and don't spoil, right? Uh-huh. You're learning. Could you help me down here once you've put everything away? I need another set of hands. Without anything in particular planned for today, I agree before heading inside. The rickety stairs creak as I slowly head up with groceries in hand, fumbling with the door handle. <laughs> Didn't even think shoveling the driveway could be an innuendo until I mentioned it. No, it's... I, I wanted to, like, nip it in the bud immediately because I know people can be weird sometimes, so I was just... Very much clarifying that that's not allowed. <laughs> it's the kind of situation where literally anything can become an innuendo if you say it in like an innuendo -y way. And I. <laughs> I don't know, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, anyway, let's put these groceries away. My arms are thankful for the relief once I manage to drop the bags in the apartment after opening the door. Opening the fridge, I get to work, stuffing in the frozen and cold items first. Next, I open the cabinet doors and start ladling in the cans and boxes. As the empty shelves fill, I get an odd sense of satisfaction from caring for myself. Living as an adult is busy work, but it's rewarding in its own way. There's an odd and unexpected feeling of accomplishment from doing even simple tasks. I'm sure it'll wear off in time, but... I'm holding on to it for now. Yeah, I feel like adulting is very rewarding. It's it's a lot of work, but I don't know. There is something that feels so good about like doing things for yourself. <laughs> being being more self-sufficient. With the job done, I close the cabinets and get back up to look about the room. The apartment is barely any warmer inside than out. I suppose there are downsides as well as upsides. Putting it out of mind as best I can. I head back down to Rose. Slipping back outside and closing the door behind me, familiar clangs and bangs carry on carry on the air as Rose still works away. Pass a rag, would you? 
I quickly take a seat next to her on a patch cleared of snow, grabbing one of the turned up pieces of old shirt and handing it to her. She seems to be cleaning out some part of the engine. Oh, some part of the engine or another. Anything interesting happening at school? Not really. The schoolwork isn't too hard so far. A friend wants to start a club. Hmm. A club, huh? That's cool. What kind? <sighs> An art club, apparently. I'm not really sold on it, though. I need to study. And she basically came up with the whole idea by herself. Rose passes the rag back and puts the part in place, motioning for, motioning for me to hold it while she wrenches it back in. After a few grunts, the job appears to be done as she puts the wrench down with a clunk and turns back toward me. Life's not about studying. I know, I know you were a teacher's pet back in high school, but you could stand to be a bit more social. So it's this again. This is another downside of living here. With so much of my time spent alone with Rose, there's, for better or worse, no easy way to escape her questioning. I love how it's like, even though I'm away from home, I still have like the, the mother figure with, with my Aunt Rose. <laughs> I know she has my best interests in mind though. I'm glad to have someone around to help me get, gri get to grips with adult life, even if I did find her intimidating at first. What was your college life like? Do we want to know this? Oh. Never had the chance to go. I'm left a little surprised as she gets back to her bike. I've only known Rose for a couple of months now, so I'm still finding out new things about her all the time. <laughs> Maybe you get why I'm on your case about this stuff now. Not everyone gets the chances you have, so make the most of it. Go to parties, get some friends, and find a boyfriend sometime. Even if it doesn't last, it'll be a start get a boyfriend eh um um my family always pushed me to put such things aside and focus on my education so that's what i did the simplicity of life back then suited me just fine and it worked out well going by my scholarship i was never really interested in boys because i was so caught up in learning yeah that's that's why is is what I'd like to say, but I'm honest enough with myself to know that's not the whole story. <laughs> Seeing Eileen last week reminded me of that. Women like her keep catching my eye, and then there was that painting of hers. As time goes on, that difference in what I like looking at gets harder and harder to explain away. Allison? Rag? Allison? I hastily place a rag in her outstretched hand, Rose using it to try and rub some of the oil and grease off her hands. I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I'm not straight, if that's truly the case. It, I, I think it is. I think it is. I think it's very safe to say it is. While I'd like to talk with her about it, I can never quite seem to find the right time. No. You're right. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Um... I was just thinking how life is complicated. Whatever you say. Sure is. Hey, you bought that ice cream I asked for you while you were out? It's in the freezer now. Why? How about we have some? Could you use a treat after working on this thing all morning on this thing? She has strange ideas about what makes a good dessert in the cold of winter, but I'm not going to stop her. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having ice cream in winter. I do that all the time. Like, I don't avoid having cold things because it's cold. Like, I, I, I'll just have ice cream anytime. I will have ice cream for breakfast on a winter's day. I will have ice cream in the middle of summer. I will... I will always find an excuse for ice cream. <laughs> and I'm going to have some more monster too. I'm going to have some non-monster as well. <laughs> to look after my throat a bit. Yeah, same. Yeah, it's ice cream is just nice. I I'm I'm always a little confused when people are like, "Well, it's it's too cold for ice cream." I I I don't think it's I don't think it's ever too cold for ice cream. 
I mean, it just chills it more. It just means it won't melt as fast. Isn't that good? <laughs> Having some <laughs> some monster and some nonster. It, it is not nonster. It is not monster. Yeah, ba 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 ba. Let's have ice cream. I am so ready. As the two of us start packing up, another peaceful day rolls by. Oh, it's so nice and calm when Caprice and Eileen are not loud. <laughs> A loud yawn from Rose emanates from the couch, the droning of the television briefly overshadowed. The only other sound is the coffee pot boiling away from the kitchen. Uh, boiling away from the kitchen, punctuated by the occasional passing car. Only half awake and still acting on autopilot, I lazily wipe the sleep from my eyes as I stagger toward the door. The smell of Rose's toast wafts invitingly through the air, making me envious of her latest start to work. I let out a loud yawn before I can stifle it, causing Rose to look over from the couch. Oh, she's so cool. What the heck? Hey. What the heck? She's so cool. If only she didn't smoke. <laughs> wow, you look like hell. Hmm. Thank you. Stay up too late playing on your phone or something? Doesn't look like you got an hour. Doesn't look like you got an hour of sleep. While Rose is less than tactful about this, it's true that I shouldn't be so tired. I'm usually a morning person, but right now I can barely remember where I even put my phone. Rose picks herself up from the couch as she finishes her breakfast, brushing toast crumbs off herself as she starts toward the kitchen. Just the neighbours being loud again. I'm surprised you didn't hear them. I may say that, but it's hardly any real shock. She sleeps like a log, which I've always been jealous about. Rose puts down the plate in her hand, giving the matter more thought than I'd intended. <laughs> The ones above us, right? Man, I'm sick of them. I'll go have a talk to him later today and get him to knock it off. Making a racket during the day is one thing, but the night's another. You don't have to do that. They might be quiet from now on anyway. Allison is so... She is so averse to conflict. She is... She is such a conflict avoider. I'm... She reminds me of myself when I was younger. <laughs> Sometimes you need to confront things, Alison. You can't just avoid everything as much as you may want to. Ah, <laughs> uh, Alison is you. Alison is very relatable, but also I'm just like you, you gotta confront some things. You gotta. It's not easy, but you can't avoid everything. <laughs> She looks surprisingly disappointed at my attempts to wave off her concern. Yeah, here we go. See, me and Rose, same wavelength. We, we know what's going on here. <laughs> you have to stand up for yourself sometimes, Alison. Waiting for things to blow over ain't always gonna work. I wind up rubbing my neck and avoid... <laughs> and avoid outright answering. <laughs> so much avoidance. She's trying to avoid everything. You cannot. I'm sorry. Apparently dropping the subject, uh, apparently dropping the topic, where, why did I say subject instead of topic, I don't know. She sighs and disappears into the kitchen after taking her plate again. I just don't want to cause a fuss, especially on my behalf. Is that really so bad? Yes. Short answer, yes. Long answer, has anyone heard about the, uh, the, 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 the rocking the boat theory? Everyone's always like, oh, don't rock the boat. But really, the way you think about it is like, if someone is causing problems, they are rocking the boat. And everyone else is just trying to stabilize the boat while this person is rocking it. If you stop trying to stabilize that boat, then the boat will start rocking. And people will say, oh, don't rock the boat. We've got to fix that. But in actual fact... Sometimes you have to rock it a bit to even it back out. <laughs> you say we sink the boat. <laughs> uh, it's like, honestly, it would be easier if nobody was rocking the boat and the boat was just stable. But if other people rock the boat, then you can't just do nothing. You have to rock it back to, to stop 
the boat from going over. It's <laughs> it's a it's it's an analogy I saw. I did like a really bad job of um, trying to explain it just now, but I it's it's the kind of thing where it's like if you just avoid conflict, then the conflict will keep happening. You can't just avoid it forever because that boat's just gonna keep rocking. You sometimes you have to confront things to stop the rocking happening to to get it back to normal. Can we rock the Casbah instead? Yeah, we can. Rock the Casbah. I'm here for that. Lock the Taskbar. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it's it's really hard though because sometimes it is it is hard. Conflict is hard. It is very easy to want to just appease people. But doing that just makes things worse in the long run because if people start making a mess of things and then they learn they can just get away with it because everyone else will smooth it over they will just keep doing it and they make it worse and it can get to the point where it gets even worse and worse and then you'll wish you'd nipped the conflict in the bud when you had the chance <laughs> if we all rock at the same time we'll eventually equalize and rock it in a rhythm yeah and then we can then we can have a boat party i guess <laughs> anyway uh with time rolling by, I glance about and see my phone on the corner of the table. Slipping it into my coat pocket, I skip over and grab my bag sitting by the door. As I stretch a bit to try and wake myself up before facing the cold outside, Rose calls out from behind me. Turning to see her shows a fistful of crumpled dollar bills in the hand thrust out towards me. For me? Money for me? Here, go buy yourself an espresso or something on the way. For me, caffeine. Oh, Rose, thank you. You're the best. You're the best. Please quit smoking. Huh? Thank you. It's it's fine. You don't have to. <laughs> Just take it. You look awful. She really does have a way with words. I reluctantly take the cash and slip it into my pocket, thanking Rose as I leave. Ah, <laughs> caffeine, a college student's best friend. So true. <laughs> As soon as I get out the door, the weather hits me. Looks like it's going to be a harsh winter this year, with the cold of the snow dumping down being made all the worse by the chilly fog hanging in the air. Twisting my head to and fro to bury it in my scarf a little better, I set off down the road with hands firmly lodged in my coat pockets. There don't seem to be many people around that are braving the weather. Not that I blame them. As the muffled sound of snow under tyres rings out, a garbage truck rumbles by. It's only after a worrying few seconds that I remember I did indeed put the garbage out for collection yesterday. I I always worry about that too. <laughs> always the moment, like, f for us, uh, our, our rubbish delivery is on a Thursday morning, so we put everything out on a Wednesday night, and so sometimes I'll, I'll just be like, wait, wait, did I, did I put my rubbish out for the bins? Did I get my recycling sorted? <laughs> Uh, get yourself a Monster Energy Ultra Zero. Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag monster please. Monster please sponsored more things than motocross. <laughs> Reaching the campus, the welcome sight of a cafe nearby lifts my spirits. I've overheard students mention the coffee here is good and it's conveniently right next to campus. It looks homely enough from the outside and only has a handful of people inside at this hour as I peer through the windows. With a quick brush of the fallen snow off my shoulders and bag, I take a breath and walk in. Ding ding! The oak tree! Oh, that's lovely! Oh, this looks so nice! It looks so cosy! A bell above the door rings out as I enter, the smell of coffee on the air combining with the homely styling inside, making for an immediately cosy atmosphere. Joining the couple of people in line, I quickly rehearse the order in my mind to make sure I get it right. I, I do that too. Ah, I do that too. The barista's nice smile toward the other patrons keeps making me trip over myself, and I've never been great in dealing with strangers. Coming to the front of the line, I manage to blurt out my order of a latte with sugar before I can mess it up. She smiles and takes my payment, leaving me to wait to the side as it's prepared. <laughs> Me too. Wait, Lyra, you're right. I could also become an MMA fighter or a NASCAR driver. That's 
that's definitely things which I am capable of doing. <laughs> Just to be sponsored by Monster. But oh, that's so relatable. I'm I am so bad at things like giving orders in like at counters and stuff. I'm so bad at it. I have to rehearse what I'm saying ahead of time. And if they ask me a question that I haven't practiced, I, I just kind of stand there and look at them like it, it takes a second to process <laughs> and figure out what to say. I get brain lag. My brain just lags whenever I have to like talk to someone at a count. <laughs> I briefly consider having it here, given how relaxing the cafe is. Yeah, sit in and have it. That's before I notice Caprice, loudly chatting with the tall man sitting across from her. Who that? Ha hi. Arrows mad. Yeah, exactly. Just the, oh no, I didn't prepare for this. What do I do? For me, it's like, I also have trouble sometimes. In conversations, when I'm when I'm listening to people, usually I'm fine, but occasionally when I'm nervous, my brain just won't process things fast enough. Like I will hear the words coming in and I will have the words in my head, but it takes me like five seconds to understand what the sentence <laughs> means. <laughs> so I'm like, I kind of have like the brain buffering moment before I answer. But yeah, Xander always calls it brain lag with me. Like, if it ever happens around the house with me, usually when I'm tired, he will ask me a question and, like, he'll just wait for the response. He he knows that I will respond eventually. I just need to, like, process the question. <laughs> He's gotten used to it. But yeah, it's mostly if I'm tired or just very nervous. But sometimes I do, like, I need that little, the little processing time to, to understand the sentence. It's like, I'll, I'll be able to, like, repeat it back to you. Like, I can say whatever was said. Someone will be like, do you know what I asked you? And I'll be like, yes, you said, this is the sentence you said. But it'll take me a second to understand. <laughs> it's really weird. It's a little weird, but... But yeah, I just practice my conversations, because then... If someone says what I expect, I know how, how the response goes to that. <laughs> Anyway, Caprice is in here. Hi. I'm surprised I didn't notice them. I must be really out of it. As the cute, <laughs> cute barista slides the coffee cup towards me, that's... You're still questioning? Alison, are you really questioning if you're gay or not? You're talking about the cute barista woman behind the counter. As the cute barista slides the coffee cup towards me, I decide I'd better leave the two in peace and drink outside. Before I can, Caprice catches sight of me and begins excitedly waving her hand in the air. Oh no, I'm talking to a stranger. Oh no. Ali! Hey, Ali! Over here! Ali! Oh, I, I guess we're not getting out of this one. Okay. <laughs> so much for that. Coffee in hand, I wearily walk over to their table and look from one to the other. Morning, Caprice. Um... Um... Man? Wallace. Upon Caprice moving her backpack off a chair and placing it on, to, on the floor, I take a seat. Allison here is a good friend and one of the founding members of the art club. She's still saying that. Of course she is. She's. I, I just am one of the founding members of the art club now. I cannot stop that. There is no way I can con con convince Caprice otherwise. I'm, I just am. I can't change this. The new art club. This is Caprice's rodeo, so I'm content to let her deal with the club as she wants to at this point. It takes me a moment to realize she referred to me as a good friend in particular. We've only known each other for a, for the couple of months since the semester started, but I'm a little glad she thinks of me like that. Good friends. Hi, I am some guy Caprice found. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Caprice. He's our fourth member. Ah, okay. 
As he sighs forlornly, all I can offer is a stilted smile in response. Caprice looked so comfortable dealing with him that I assumed they knew each other already. Come to think of it, Caprice had no problem dealing with Eileen either, despite barely knowing her. I'm impressed at how she can talk to strangers with just the same confidence as friends. Maybe she even considers him one already. Yuri. 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 Thank you for the resub, Gigi. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the 26 months. Welcome to Yuri time, also featuring a, the guy Caprice found. <laughs> Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Happy, happy Tuesday! So what'd you get up to over the weekend, Ali? Um, got some groceries, uh... Just housework and errands. It's surprising how much time I spend on that sort of thing now that I've moved out. I get what you mean. Thankfully, I split the work with my roommates. I see. Also, I love this music so much. This music is great. <laughs> I love the music. It's my roommate that makes me want to pick up the slag. Caprice turns to Wallace for his input, making him part of the conversation. I look after the family gun shop on weekends. Nothing glamorous, but enough to get by on. Oh. Okay. All right, uh, Caprice continues on chatting, mostly with him. Wallace quietly nods along, adding a yeah or I see as needed. I get the distinct feeling he's being talked at more than being talked to. Oh, hi. Now that we're both sitting across from each other, I can fully appreciate how much of a bear the man is, cutting more of a foreboding figure thanks to his beard. A bear, you say? <laughs> I can already feel myself shrinking in response. For want to not stare at him, I turn to the coffee steaming away before him. A flat black, with the lid taken off to let it cool faster. I can taste how bitter it is just by looking at it. <laughs> the conversation is suddenly interrupted by a phone going off. Apparently Caprice's! as her hand dives into the front pocket of her hoodie and retrieves it. Wallace and I just look to each other as she wanders off a few steps to take the call, unsure exactly what to do with ourselves. It only takes a few seconds before she returns. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Sorry guys, gotta go. Roommates need me. You just gonna leave me here? With this guy I met five minutes ago? Hello? Wait! I'll see you two around! We've got much more to discuss! Okay! Alright! With that, she grabs her backpack and skips out into the winter air without another word. Going by her face, I'm more worried about this than she is. Left alone with Wallace, I sip my coffee for something to do. Glancing in his direction, he looks more relieved than anything. Oh yeah, I guess he's not being talked at anymore. <laughs> She means well. I know she does. Even if Eileen doesn't think so, I just have to keep telling myself that. And now I'm glad I didn't say that. Much as I would like to leap to her defense, she is pushing this awfully hard. If he's trying to start conversation, I feel I should at least try to reciprocate rather than letting him twist in the wind. So, uh, you and Eileen know each other? He gives a nod after taking a long sip of his coffee. That must be so awfully bitter. We're friends. Met when she was a freshman in high school. Caprice saw us together and made the connection. Oh. She's filled me in on this club business. I'm going to guess you were pulled into it. Yeah. Uh, something like that. It kind of spiraled out of control. Sorry. Wallace simply shrugs. Not the first time clubs have been pushy about scouting members. I was actually thinking the whole thing might be good for Eileen. Single-mindedness is her best and worst trait, really. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't want to say please put up with Eileen, but I'm having trouble working <laughs> out a better way to word that. Don't worry, I I fully understand. Eileen does seem like that. I understand. She isn't a bad person, just driven. I'm sure you know someone similar. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder who that could be. I do shudder what her reaction would be to being told she and Caprice are similar in any way. I'm still not sure about dealing with her, but it's hard to deny someone worried about their friend. Wallace seems content that he's managed to get his point across, silence hanging in the air as he thoughtfully sips his coffee. It reminds me that I should drink my own before it gets too cold as well. The weather outside is a harsh contrast to the nice atmosphere in here, which might be why more students are starting to file in before classes start. Yeah, so sometimes you've got to just... Sometimes you've got to just say it. Sometimes you've got to be blunt. It's like, I don't want this to come across in a mean way, but there isn't a nicer way I can put it without the meaning coming across. <laughs> you just need that little disclaimer, just like, I say this with a lot of love in my heart, but... <laughs> The coffee's nice as well, so maybe I'll make this a regular spot. If I can afford to, that is, uh, being a college student and all. As for my companion, I think I'm starting to see him in a better way. He's just concerned about his friend. Maybe he's the gentle giant type who isn't that threatening at all. Yeah, he seems really nice. He seems like a good guy. <laughs> is this like the carrot and stick? <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm. I'm trying to figure out what you mean by that. With his cup empty as he sets it down, Wallace sits back to savor the last of its taste. Well, I've said my piece. Caprice will probably give up on me, but you and Eileen are another matter. You think Caprice will give up on you, you, buddy? You've got another thing coming. I'm. <laughs> Caprice is a good friend. I can handle her. It was nice meeting you, Wallace. I carefully repeat his name to try and engrave it in my memory. I have no doubt I'd instantly forget it otherwise. He is perhaps overly hopeful when it comes to Caprice, though. Yeah. Uh, what's everyone's go-to coffee order? With Allison judging the straight black? Yeah, she, she had a latte with sugar. Uh, I don't tend to drink coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. If I end up going to a coffee shop, I usually end up having uh, hot chocolate instead. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not a coffee fan. I get all of my caffeine through Monster Energy. I, d I don't need caffeine from coffee. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm just not a fan of the taste of coffee. The few times I have had coffee before, the only times I've liked it are when there is so much stuff added to them that you can't even taste the coffee. And at that point, I feel like it's it doesn't really count as coffee then. <laughs> Ah, oh, like being blunt is the stick, but having good intention is the carrot. No, I, d I don't think... I don't think that'd be how the carrot and stick works. The carrot and stick is more like holding something nice out of reach to make you go towards it, but then you never reach it. It's a, a different analogy, I think. But no, I, th I think it's like sometimes you do just have to say things bluntly because there isn't another way of wording it. Like, if you try and sugarcoat things too much, then the point might not come across it's like if you try and soften the blow a bit then the other person might be like right i understand but they don't understand the severity as much sometimes you you really need to be like you need to know how serious i am here and you just have to bluntly say it <laughs> thanks you seem nice so hopefully eileen will ease off a bit oh well that's that's nice that's nice to hear him say like maybe maybe he'll he'll share a good word as well now. Maybe because we had a talk, he'll talk to Eileen and be like, "Oh, that that Allison girl seemed really nice. She's nice, right? Like spread the good word, make Eileen nicer." Yeah. Yeah, our oh, coffee shops usually also do tea. Yeah, I I sometimes get tea as well. Like if I'm going for a hot drink, it's it's either tea or hot chocolate. <laughs> 
But uh, it, it makes me really happy that a lot of coffee places also do, like, non-coffee drinks that are kind of like coffee. <laughs> so, like, I can get something that looks like a coffee, but it's not. So I can... I can blend in, I can I can hide, <laughs> disguise myself amongst the coffee drinkers. Ah, uh, speaking of which, you need to go grab lunch. Oh, I hope you have a lovely lunch. Thank you for stopping in, and I hope the studying goes well. Wishing you all the best with your, your the, with your finals. I hope you, I hope you pass everything very well. <laughs> but thank you for stopping in. Have nice food. He levers himself off the chair with a grunt taking a glance outside before grabbing his scarf and hat once more. Good luck with class. I love his scarf and hat! Oh, that's great. Thanks. You too. He's fashionable. With that, he leaves the cafe while sliding past someone coming in, staggering through the terrible weather outside as he goes. With my next class so soon, I'd better finish this coffee up off quickly. With that in mind, I concentrate on taking as big gulps as I can without looking unsightly. It's funny how one thing leads to another, though. It feels like a snowball's begun to start rolling, meeting new and interesting people since I started here. It might have taken a couple of months, but maybe I will manage to find some new friends. With a bit of help from Caprice, yes. I'm also going to have some more monster. Oh, back into class now. Oh, library? Yeah, we're in the library. Nice. With the weather turning worse and worse as the week went on, the library seemed as good a place as any to spend some time before having lunch. Unfortunately, it looks like I wasn't the only one who had that idea. While the library here is bigger than my previous schools, that doesn't matter much when a large portion of the students are dumped inside. While my first choice would have been using one of the computers, that's obviously out of the question. Worried about looking like a dork as I loiter around, I start walking slowly through the library. Thankfully, nobody pays me much attention while I glance from side to side for an empty table or desk. The students who are actually studying seem to be outnumbered by those gossiping with friends or catching up on sleep. It's only in a far corner of the room that I catch a familiar face, albeit not necessarily a welcome one. Did we find Eileen by any chance? Oh yeah, we did. Hi. Eileen sits hunched over a thick textbook occasionally scribbling into a small notebook beside it as her finger stops every so often on one important part or another. It's hard to tell if she's annoyed or just studying hard. I consider leaving Eileen to her studying and braving the weather outside before she rubs her temple and looks down mournfully at her notebook. That pose is all too familiar for any student. I feel a little bad for her. Given the vending machine problems and how she wound up with Caprice stuck to her, she doesn't seem to have very good luck. She might not be the friendliest person, but if I could help her a bit... Oh, what a sweetheart. Ali is so sweet. With Wallace's words weighing on my mind, I grimace and accept my fate as I begin walking to the otherwise empty table. She looks up and catches my eye as I come near, so... I guess I'm committed to this now. Step one. Approach beautiful woman. Step two. Uh... Afternoon. My existence has been noted. I don't think that could sound any more perfunctory, but at least she isn't shooing me away. <laughs> Step two. Lose my spaghetti. <laughs> Oh no, manufactured desk shortage. Whatever will we do? I guess I will have to sit at the same desk. Oh my. Setting my bag beside my chair as I take a seat, I pull out my phone to check for any missed messages and switch it to silent before placing it on the table before me. Hey. Hi. Surprised you're not in the art room. I don't live there, you know. Wouldn't it be more private than here, though? She lets out a long, miserable groan as her head sinks. Hardly difficult to work out what that means. 
Caprice wouldn't stop bugging me to join her drawing for some stupid theme. What was it? I wasn't really listening, Christmas scenes or something. She's barely even listening to me as she tries to wave me off. Caprice is probably scurrying around campus as we speak, hoping for me to join her as a drawing partner. What are you studying? Math. It's been kicking my ass, so I need to get my head around it for these stupid gen ed classes. Eileen barely lifts her head up from the notebook as she speaks. Looking over the table at her work, various practice equations cover the notebook's page. I have to admit, I do admire Eileen's drive. I was just going to pass some time in the library reading, but seeing her working away has made me feel a little guilty. Hmm. You any good at this stuff? I, I know how to count to five. Hmm? That. I would say that as a yes. Math? Well, I ended up skipping the gen ed class thanks to my placement exam results. Someone spent their time studying like a good little teacher's pet? Nothing like that. Math and science are easy enough, so I ended up coasting along. I need to learn how to study now that I'm here. Wow, that... I love that she's just like, oh, no, oh no I'm, I just, I just, they're just easy enough. You're, you're just not smart. <laughs> I don't think she even realized how that could come across. But if someone's struggling with math and then you proceed to say, oh, no, math was just easy. So I coasted along like <laughs> that's a little. It's OK, she'll learn. She'll learn. I can only count to four. One, I can count to one, two. I can count to two. Eileen's eyes narrow. Maybe she wasn't exaggerating about her skills after... After having such an easy time in high school, it's easy to forget I'm the odd one out here. Of course I'd put my foot in my mouth just as I was starting to break the ice with her. Oh, okay, at least she recognized it. She I, she realized after she said it. She, she, re she recognized... She realized after she said it. Ooh, the, the worst feeling when you say something and then you're like, I didn't mean for it to come across like that. Huh? Um... I, I mean, uh... If, if, if you want, I could have a look at your work. She's hardly enthusiastic, but shrugs and moves herself a little out of the way. My curiosity's gotten the better of me. Coming around the table and looking at the notebook from behind her, I take a gander at her looks. Her, I, I take a gander at her. Um, hmm. I take a gander at her notes so far. At least this is easy to read, given her immaculate handwriting. The more I check over her notes, though, the more the corners of my mouth drag down. I'm guessing she's no good at math. You feel that, though? Just so good at this stuff before high school that you just never learned how to study and by then it was too late and you fell, wa fell way behind. That is exactly the trouble I had to. I, I was the kind of person where when I was in primary school, everything was just like, you learn this, you know this thing, you have a question, you put the answer in. I just, I, I never learned how to study because I always just... I always just put the answers in. I just put the answers and then it was done. And then when I started secondary school, I was so lost. I had no idea how to study. And I I, I actually did like really badly in school. <laughs> like compared to my potential and my actual level of, I don't, I don't like saying intelligence. I feel like judging intelligence is such a, a weird term, but like, with like my my latent capability to learn i didn't do as well in school as i could have like if i had been taught how to study well then i would have done so much better i would have i would have done so well in school but as it was i did not know what to do and then as soon as things started getting to a point where i had to study myself and i wasn't just being directly taught everything and it was more like self-study, that was when I fell apart. That was when I started doing really badly in school. <laughs> yeah, former gifted student syndrome is so real. It really is. 
Uh, for you, it was that you were good enough at stuff that you didn't realize you had ADHD and needed meds. That was probably also part of it for me as well, because I didn't get diagnosed with ADHD until really later on in my life. And that, like, the inability to concentrate enough on studying, really... I really wonder how I would have done in school if I'd had medication. <laughs> I'm really, really curious, but alas... Alas, that is that is a time that is gone now. That is that is in the past, and that can't be changed, sadly. All I can do is move on with the future. And I'm medicated now, so I can concentrate on things now, which is really nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a combination of never learning to study, not being able to concentrate properly, uh, just being really socially awkward in general, uh, primary school was fine for me, secondary school was a nightmare. But it's okay, I've ended up here now, and I think I'm... I don't know, I think I'm doing alright for myself. I think I'm okay. I don't think people would look at me and just be like, oh, that, that poor woman. <laughs> so that's nice, at least. Like, there, there's still a lot that I struggle with. I, I don't hide it. Uh, I, I don't talk about it actively, but I also don't hide it either. Like, if I'm having a rough time, I will say, but... But yeah, I'm, I'm doing much better than I thought I would, so that's nice, at least. But yeah, I, I really relate to just not knowing how to study. She's done a good job of showing her process, and the first couple of questions covering expressions look right at a glance. When it comes to polynomials, however, the next two have odd leaps of logic, while the last meanders off into the wilderness. <laughs> I realize I should say something to express how she's done so far, but the window of time to say something even mildly positive to soften the blow has long since passed. So, it's like that, huh? You caught some of it, right? That didn't help. <laughs> Polynom polynomials do seem to trip a lot of people up, so she isn't catastrophically bad at this. Still, considering this first semester of gen ed subjects is mostly reviewing what we did in high school, this isn't a promising start. Um... Mind if I scribble on this a bit? Sure. Knock yourself out. I reach over to grab my pen from the other side of the table before hunching over her book and jotting down a couple of notes. First up are a few pointers to where the first two polynomials went awry before taking a parallel crack at the worst of them. Pausing for a moment halfway to check the logic of what I'm doing, I'm satisfied I'm on the right track as I finish it off. The result looks about right. Eileen flips over the textbook page on cue to check my answer, looking a little dubious as she does so. Vindicated by the matching result, I feel a good bit of relief at not making a fool of myself in front of her. <laughs> At least one of us has a head for this stuff. Does it make more sense to you now? She takes a look, a thorough look at my scribbles on her notebook, eyebrows furrowed as she tries to pick up the reasoning. I can't help but glance between my notes and Eileen as she looks over them. If she didn't project an aura of wanting to be left alone all the time, just her looks and style would probably attract people. <laughs> she is attractive. <sighs> I think so. You don't sound too sure. This is about as confident as I ever get with math, so don't worry. I'll have to repay you sometime. Indebted to beautiful woman? Hold on. Hold on. Hello? Taking that as confirmation that my job is done, I return to my seat as Eileen leans back in her chair. Eileen. No, she lean. <laughs> It's nothing, really. You should ask your professor, though, if you're not confident doing polynomials. I don't even know what polynomials are. Hold on. I'm getting my dictionary out. What What the heck is a polynomial? Or polynomial. Poly, polynomial. I'm not even pronouncing it right. What's a polynomial? It's like, I might know what it is, I just don't know what the word for it is. Pol Na, 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 na. It's not in my dictionary. I need to Google it. 
Thank you for the Wiktionary narration redeem. It's not even in my dictionary. It is not a word that is in my physical dictionary, so I'm gonna have to Google it. Let's Google it. Okay, great start. In mathematics, a polynomial is a mathematical expression consisting of in indeterminates, also called variables and coefficients that involves only the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and positive integer, in integer, integer, powers of variables. Oh, it's algebra, it's, it's, it's algebra. Is it literally just algebra? Okay, um. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know what that is. We just don't call it that. We just don't call it that. Yeah, just anything with variables in it. Okay, yeah, I do know what they are. <laughs> it's, it's like x minus 2 equals 1. Find the value of x. x equals 3. <laughs> that kind of thing. I know that. Yeah, I, 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 I've I just never heard it called that before. Cool, okay, I learned something today. I learned a new word, nice. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the wavy functions. The wooblies. Yeah, I, I know this. I'm looking through the Wikipedia page now and I'm just like, yeah, I, I know how to do this. I, I literally learned this in secondary school. I do know how to do this. I just did not know that was the word for it because when I was in school, we just called it all algebra. <laughs> it was all just called algebra. That was just like the blanket term for everything. <laughs> yeah, usually means that it has powers higher than two in it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Like it has multiple, multiple uh, variables to figure out. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I know how to do that. Okay, I feel a little smarter than myself now. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I I'm so glad I actually know something. I actually know. I didn't think I knew what it was, but I I feel not stupid anymore. Nice. Hmm. Needing to ask them doesn't mean that I want to. Given how frank she is, I guess this must be a matter of pride rather than shyness. Maybe that's where her stubbornness comes from. Why are you wasting your time here with me, anyway? Don't you have some friends to do friend things with? I only really know you and Caprice. Met Wallace the other day, actually. <sighs> So that brat was trying to drag him into the club, too. Wallace may think it might be a good experience for her, but Eileen's disdain for Caprice is going to be hard to overcome. Hearing my phone vibrating on the table, I quickly pick it up to see who's messaged me. I quickly force myself to keep a poker face as the name comes into view. It's Caprice, of course it is. She's literally the only person who would be messaging me. <laughs> Area. Hey! Wanna grab something at the cafeteria? She must have given up on art out of loneliness if Eileen's avoiding her and I'm here. I'm not terribly hungry, but I should probably get at least a sandwich or something from the cafeteria before classes begin. Quickly typing in an agreement to meet there, I lock the phone once more. Hey! I might go grab lunch. Want to come? Sorry, already ate. Thanks for the offer, though. She's already back to concentrating on her textbook as she mumbles the reply. It's probably for the best, anyway. Giving a quiet, giving a quiet farewell, I grab my bag and put my phone back inside. As I pull it over my shoulder, though, Eileen looks up. By the way, I don't blame you for any of this stuff Caprice is pushing. You seem all right. She thinks I'm all right, yes. Yes, we're in there. So I'm all right. Perhaps I should accept that as praise coming from her. That is high praise. Come on, this is... This is great. This is really good. Glad for our meeting having been somewhat successful, I wave goodbye and head out toward the cafeteria. 
The cafeteria is little less full than the library. The stocks of food behind the counter already running low on all the usual student favorites. With the line for food moving quickly, I managed to grab the last set of sandwiches and move on. Scanning about, I notice Capri sipping her juice, an empty tray before her. She sure eats fast. I'm the opposite. I'm a super slow eater. I eat so slowly. I'm glad for the company either way. I walk over and take a seat at her table. Hi! Hey, Ali! Long time no see! We saw each other yesterday. How's everything going? How are your classes? <laughs> Not too bad. It's it's all familiar enough right now. Not that everyone's doing as well as I am. As I unpack my sandwich and begin to nibble, my thoughts turn to the woman in the library. I feel a little sorry for her. Eileen's struggle reminding me that I have it easier than some at times. Then there's the matter of her and the club. Setting my food back down, I decide to tackle this more directly than usual. If Eileen can be so direct with others, then so can I. Oh my goodness, I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her. Yes, be direct. I was thinking, you meant for me to meet Eileen last week, didn't you? She's fun, isn't she? <clears throat> Something like that. That painting of the girl in the water was really pretty. Yeah, she's really good, huh? No wonder the other art club tried to grab her. About that. Well, more about Eileen. I'm not sure it's a good idea to be forcing people into this club. I know you're excited to get things started, but just because her art's good doesn't mean she wants to be in a club. Lynn Starfall, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome in, welcome to Yuri time! How's it going? Ali. You sound like you're not really into it yourself. She's sharper than I give her credit for. Caught off guard, I have to stop and think as she sips at the last of her juice. The sucking sound as she makes sure to get every last drop doesn't help. Oh, that sound was, it's like the, the bottom of something slurping it up with a straw. Ugh. I can't say I'm enthusiastic about this. Eileen studying is exactly what I need to be doing, lest I waste my scholarship. On the other hand, Caprice is my only friend right now, and I do enjoy spending time with her. As she puts down her drink with a satisfied breath, I know my answer. I... I can make time for it. She gives a comically big sigh, missing my hesitation entirely. If this ends up only being between a couple of us, maybe it won't be too bad. As long as it's not a whole bunch of people getting involved. I want to do it this for her sake as well, you know. Eileen looks kind of lonely all by herself in that room. Huh. I hadn't considered that Caprice was coming at it from that angle. It makes me think a little better of her. Aw, oh, tired after a long day at work? Oh, I hope you can rest now at least. I'm doing well, thank you. I'm having fun. I'm having fun with first snow. It's Yuri time. And we're we're making friends. And doing math. We're doing mathematics. What she says makes me reconsider Eileen's actions in another in another light as well. I wonder how much of her reluctance around this isn't due to Caprice herself but rather her feeling used by the other club for her art. That's a good way of thinking about it, ooh. Also, welcome back, Bob. I hope the journey back went well. Welcome, welcome. Um, Eileen doesn't hate us, yay! <laughs> Seeing that kind of talent makes you kind of envious though, right? <clears throat> well, I just drew a bit in high school for fun. I don't think I could ever manage something beautiful like that. We keep chatting, but Caprice's earlier words stick firmly in my mind. We may meet every school day and talk quite a lot, at, at least she does, but I realise just how little I really know her in spite of that. Maybe spending more time together wouldn't be so bad after all. 
he 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 da da we're in the hallway with time on my hands thanks to the last class of the week finally being over some quiet sketching would be a nice way to unwind with that in mind i make my way up to the art room studying would be the proper thing to do but i'm just too burned out not that this stubborn cold helps either see i love the cold i'd be happy with that while most classes are winding down, their professors are aware that the looming holidays are a big distraction, others have tried ramping up the workload to try and cover everything in their semester plans. I might be keeping up, but plenty aren't. With my bag tucked under my arm, I give a sigh as I stagger along the snowy path to the arts building. It would be nice to feel like I'm doing more than treading water, in class and socially. Stepping into the arts building with its strung up decoration reminds me to look on the bright side. It's already the middle of November, so not long until Christmas and being back with my family. I'll be thankful to be back with them, even if the rest of the holiday period is a wash. I manage to angle around a chatting group of friends blocking the hallway and start up the stairs without bothering them. Another small success. I briefly wonder if Eileen's in the art room as I proceed along the second floor hallway. Her paintings are always nice to see, but whether she thinks of me as just another pain like she views Caprice weighs on my mind. I don't want to annoy her. Oh, pretty. Ooh. Opening the door to the quiet room, I can't say I'm surprised at the sight before me. Of course she was going to be here. Eileen's eyes glance over as I gingerly shut the door behind me, ending up being the only acknowledgement of my presence at all before she goes right back to her work. Curiosity about what she's painting gets the better of me. Hey. Is it okay if I watch? Sure. Go ahead. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. She doesn't bother to look at me as she says it, but it doesn't. Uh, she doesn't sound reluctant either. So I scoot over and sit myself on a table as quietly as I can. Eileen's brush continues to flick to and fro as she works on the background. Hmm. So Caprice is a no-show. She said she had to go do something with her roommates. Her shoulders slump as she sighs, relieved. <laughs> Do you really hate her that much? <laughs> Believe me, if I hated her, you'd know. I'm just glad to have some quiet. <laughs> yeah, we got a CG. It's character development time. I'm so ready. It's hard not to take that as a thinly veiled implication that I should be quiet as well. Wallace might not be wrong that Eileen means well, but that doesn't make her any easier to talk to. Something on your mind? You're really good at this. It'd feel weird to say I've been talking about Eileen behind her back. What I said is true though. I'm impressed she can carry on a conversation while working and I like how her painting's turning out. Thanks. Thanks. Been doing it for a while. Hmm? As a hobby? If everything works out, hopefully as a career. Artist or teacher. Aiming for the latter. That does explain her persistence at working a way to get better. Wanting to be a teacher, though? She gives me the feeling of a drill sergeant more than an art tutor. Is, is, is she gonna uh, uh, teach, teach her? Teach me? Teach me art? Be teacher for me? Hmm. Teaching moment? Yes? Hmm. Tubes out. Eileen gets up and places her supplies on the sill beside her, opening the cupboard and fiddling around a bit. Before long, she emerges with a new tube of crimson paint in hand. Rather than get back to painting after closing the door, though, she instead turns to me. So, what about you? Huh? Sorry? 
What are you doing once you escape this place? Um... Oh, uh... I don't really know. Still trying to figure that out. I feel like I failed a test as I trail off, but Eileen doesn't seem worried. You're still young, and there's a good few courses to look into here. Just try your hand at whatever comes up until something grabs you. There are plenty of worse ways to spend your time in college. You're smart too, so you have that going for you. I awkwardly smile at the praise. I've never been good at knowing how to handle compliments. She may say that, but the fact Eileen's so set on a career yet only seems to be around my age rubs in my lack of direction. I'm still patting myself on the back for managing groceries. <laughs> My parents always told me I could do whatever I set my mind to, but it was so easy to tread water for me that I never bothered trying to swim. Hmm. Sounds like you have a nice family. I move to respond. The memory of them gives me the familiar pang of homesickness all uh, the familiar pang of homesickness all over again. I might have found time to call mom yesterday, but it just isn't the same. You okay? <sighs> yeah, just... I miss them. Well, everyone here is going through the same thing. You as well? I miss my sister, yeah. She's probably fine, but that doesn't make it easier. Mom and Dad, too? Uh... To be honest, things have been easier between me and my folks since I moved out. <sighs> huh. It's hard to imagine being on such bad terms with my family that moving away was better. The best thing about Christmas will be the chance to see them again, but Eileen doesn't seem particularly fussed about it at all. Yeah, I've got to say, one thing I, I am always very, very thankful for is the fact that I get along so, so well with my mum and my brother. Like, my immediate family right here and Tiffany, I'm very thankful. I, I've got a great family. <laughs> Wait, a lesbian incapable of handling compliments? Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, everyone has different experiences, though. Leaving me to ponder, Eileen goes back to her painting. I get the feeling she wouldn't be this gracious to Caprice, so she seems to think a little better of me, at least. She's lent me an ear. Not boring you, am I? We got voices now, yeah. No, not at all. I like watching you paint. She pauses a moment before continuing. It's only for a second, but I sense a hesitation there. Did did I say something wrong? I love this CG. I love this scene. This is great. The moment passes as soon as it arrived. Eileen's brush returning to the canvas. The other students appear to have left by now, the orange-stained room silent, save for her work. The building's just a little cold, but that's fine. As the minutes roll by, I end up watching her for a while as I swing my legs. I almost forgot I came here to actually draw, but that doesn't matter. Watching her painting slowly progress is more than enough. Every so often, she mixes up a dab of this paint and that on the wooden palette beside her. The side of a hip is traced out, the light bouncing off a waist shaded, or a flowing strand of hair detailed with the fine tip. I can't help but admire her ability to set a goal and stay true to it, knowing exactly what she's working toward at this stage of her life. If only I had an ounce of the ambition Eileen has. I might go to a cafe nearby to grab a coffee. I'll be back in a bit. Tired? Yeah. Sorry to distract you from your work. Glad for the company. Have fun. Ha. With that, I hop off the table and start toward the door. Oh, wait. Her voice stops me in my tracks just as I'm about to go. It'd be great if she decided to come as well. Could you grab me a coffee too? Espresso, straight. I'll give you some cash when you come back. Yeah, I can do that. So much for that. Alright, so she is also an espresso drinker. That that makes sense. 
That feels like the kind of drink I'd expect her to have, honestly. The cafeteria hums away as students talk amongst themselves, the room having mostly filled up by now. The thought briefly passes my mind that winter must be great for business, given this being the closest place for cheap food during bad weather. Some smears on the edges of the plate are all that remains of the mostly cooked pasta served today. What's left of my accompanying soda bubbling away while I pass some time browsing this site and that. As I read, a shadow suddenly looms over the other side of the table. Looking up from my phone reveals a very familiar figure. Eileen peers down as she stands at the opposite side of the table, a large plate of food steaming away in her hand. The fresh pasta sauce is strong enough to smell from here. <laughs> An espresso, gay, I mean, I mean, I mean straight. <laughs> the only thing straight here is the espresso. <laughs> Okay to sit here? Uh, hi! Uh, sure. I quickly set my phone down as she takes a seat and arranges her tray on the table. Happy that she'd choose to sit with me. Oh, and also my posture, I guess. Thank you for the posture check! Uh... Ah, sit up straight. There we go. Big, big stretch. There we go. I'm, I'm sitting up straight now. But I'm not straight, don't worry. <laughs> and thank you for the hydrate too. Have another sippy of my monster. Gotta make sure I am also fueled. And I'm starting to feel hungry. I might have to have a snack at some point. <laughs> like, if I'm gonna be streaming for another hour, I'm already hungry. I... Do I have any snacks here? Hold on. I like this background music. I'm... Hold on. I will be right back just one second. I just want to see if I have any snacks in my room. I'm, I'm a little hungry. I'm, I'm a bit hungry. Wait, I do. I do. I have a, a chocolate chip brioche roll. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a brioche roll very quickly. <laughs> I will mute while I'm eating. Let's just enjoy the vibes for a little bit. But sorry, I'm not, I just I felt my stomach rumble, and I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna last another hour without eating anything. So, uh, I'm now gonna treat myself to a snack. Wait, while I eat... I'm gonna try and find a PNG that I can add to my model. Hold on. This is so silly, I love this. <laughs> it's a little snack break, don't mind me, thank you.
Okay, that was really nice. <laughs> I needed that. Thank you everyone for bearing with me as I quickly snarfled a milk chocolate chip brioche roll. <laughs> there we go, that should fuel me until six now. <laughs> Thank you! Right, where were we? Dinner time! Eileen's got her pasta! Back to it. <laughs> Back to the game. A glance around to see if anyone's with her makes me realise why she probably chose to sit here. The cafeteria is practically full and this is simply the nearest table with space available. About to take her first gulp of food, Eileen's fork halts midair before saying something. <sighs> Cold any better? Yeah, clearing up now. Oh, I I thought I thought she meant like the cold weather. I didn't realize she actually had a cold. Okay, that makes more sense. That makes more sense as to why she was feeling run down. <laughs> okay, oopsie, my bad. Yeah, she she caught a cold. Good to hear. With that, she starts on her pasta and salad. As I take my phone to browse some more and Eileen calmly eats the average at best cafeteria food, it feels as though there's no need to chat just to fill the air. That silence between us is becoming more comfortable. I love comfortable silence. I feel like it always says a lot about, about a relationship, like when you can just enjoy a comfortable silence. Like, sometimes there's a situation where it's silent and it feels uncomfortable and it feels like you need to fill that space. But it is so nice when it's just the comfortable silence. I love that. That is, before I get a message. Flicking away the browser app, I take a quick look. Hmm. <laughs> this is Rose! Oh, I just realized it's a Rose! Ah! Oh. Hi, Rose! Can't make dinner. Work sucks. I I guess she has overtime today. Ah, poor Rose. You were getting groceries yesterday, right? Anything in the fridge? A little question emoji. Seconds tick by as I wait for a response. A sense of concern starting to take over. Rose. Rose. Sorry. Rose. Work needs me. See you later. <sighs> All I can do is sigh and slump down in my seat as I lay my phone on the table. I guess we're having takeout tonight. <laughs> Yeah, it goes over to someone's house and all you do is sit on your phone in their room doing your own things. Oh, I love that though! It's like, it's actually like, one of my favorite things is- hold on, I want to- I want to try and find an image to put the point across. Where's the image I'm thinking of? This, this will do. I hope this image isn't too large. Do you want to know what one of my favorite things is? My favorite thing? Parallel play. Parallel play, it's a thing from like childhood. Parallel play is like when you are with somebody else and you are enjoying separate tasks but you're doing them together. Parallel play. Like, you're you're playing at the same time, not necessarily directly with each other, like they're both building their own little blocks of towers here, but still enjoying time together while working on their own thing. I love parallel play. <laughs> That's my kind of relationship. I Like, I love doing things with people as well. I really love, like, spending time together, like, doing things with other people but I also love just just like enjoying somebody's company doing our own thing but still enjoying our company like that's I like that I like it a lot <laughs> it's good it's good anyway I, I didn't actually need the picture to demonstrate that I just wanted to <laughs> anyway 
All I can do is sigh and slump down in my seat as I lay my phone on the table. Eileen looks at me in puzzlement, her fork hovering near her mouth. Huh? Bad news? Hmm. Roommate forgot to do groceries. We're out of food. Can't you just grab a burger on the way home? That would be the plan if I wasn't nearly through my allowance. I just look away and groan, not up to outright saying that I'm broke. <laughs> it's that bad, huh? At first glance, she shrugs off as she goes back to eating, but she seems to actually be in thought after watching her a bit. Ah, oh, some friends and you started up a draw pile last night. It was so nice. Oh, I love that. I love that. Eventually, after finishing her food, she speaks up. Hmm. I guess I was cooking some extra anyway. You can come over for dinner if you want. It's within walking distance. The suggestion's enough to make me bolt upright in an instant. <laughs> She's inviting me to dinner? Oh. Okay, yes. What? To your place? Yeah. Should be fine, right? You you okay with stir fry? Thank you. I Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this. Uh sure, whatever. Just don't make it weird. <laughs> I'm I'm not making it weird. Why why would it be weird? There's, there's nothing weird about a woman going to have dinner with another woman. That's that's not weird. Yeah. Considering the discussion over, Eileen goes back to finishing off her food without much concern for what she's just said. Maybe she does have a good side. She clearly has a good side. She's feeding me. Stopping before the large black door, I repeat the address Eileen gave me to reassure myself I've come to the right place. Eileen's definition of walkable is apparently rather different than mine, still catching my breath from the hike. I thought I was going to be fine, but my nerves are getting the better of me now that I'm here. I'm going into a near stranger's home, after all, and it'll just be the two of us. It'll be just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Uh, if In school, we just happen to be around each other, but this is entirely different. Glancing down the hall to make sure nobody's watching me awkwardly loiter around, I take a moment to appreciate how nice her apartment building is. This is a nice area, and everything inside is immaculate. Even the hallway carries a slight scent of cleaning products. Ooh. Out of excuses to, scall to stall any longer, I take a breath and gingerly press the doorbell, its muffled chime ringing out from behind the door. I run my hands through my hair one more time to make sure I look presentable as footsteps come to the door. Why would you want to look presentable, Alison? Want to... Want to wanna make a good impression? The plain wooden door swings open, answered by... Not... Eileen. Um... Uh... Hey. Oh, evening. Before I can ask if I got the right apartment, he turns around. Of course, of course they're roommates. It makes so much sense. Allison's here. Wallace jerks his head around for me to follow. I obediently do so, still too confused to get a word out. Eileen didn't mention he would be here. I don't know how I feel about it. Maybe I should be relieved it's not just the two of us. Yeah, why would you presume it would just be the two of you? Don't, don't make it weird. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at their plays. Look at the place, this is amazing. Oh, this is so nice. Barely noticing the thud of the door closing behind me, I take a quick glance around her apartment as I place my coat on the counter. The first striking thing is how clean it is, with everything put neatly in its place. Then again, aside from a few paintings on the wall that are possibly her own, there's not much clutter around to clean up. The television, quite a decent size for a student's, sits on a cable news channel. Riveting as the economic situation report is, it's barely audible over the clucking rice cooker coming from the kitchen. As Wallace and I stride in, Eileen comes to her feet after having been on the couch. 
She lazily covers a deep yawn with her hand as she does. Hi. Um, hi. So you managed to find the place. Welcome to my home, I guess. Hmm. I'd introduce you to this guy as well, but it seems you two already know each other. Wallace and I exchange a brief glance. Just had a coffee together once. While I did find his size intimidating at first, he seems a bit of a gentle giant figure now that I'm around him more. Looks like this isn't going to be dinner for just me and Eileen, then. Taking one last glance about, the inside of her place is as nice as the outside. From the meticulous cleanliness to the trendy furniture, her home looks more suited to a design magazine than a student's living area. Your apartment's really nice. Thanks. Thanks. I like to try and keep things organized. Yeah. Especially when visitors are over. Eileen glares daggers at Wallace, but he doesn't pay any heed. The two seem to have a good handle on each other. Did she tidy up for me? For me? For little old me? <laughs> Moving on. Wallace, just watch TV or something while we get dinner sorted. Can do. Thanks again for letting me have dinner with you. Don't get too comfortable, I'm gonna make you work for your food. Eileen motions for me to come over with her, but the gesture was unnecessary given her commanding tone. Wallace gives a dreary glance as he follows his orders, and I quickly do the same. <laughs> Let's cook dinner together, I'm ready. I end up standing before a well-used wooden cutting board, taking the large knife Eileen offers before sizing up the variety of vegetables awaiting its blade. I don't think she notices my hesitation as she opens the rice cooker and gives the contents a stir. The two of us waste little time in getting to work, the sound of food being prepared filling the room. Unfortunately, it isn't long before I've earned Eileen's ire. <laughs> And Eileen's ire, what a phrase. I love that. No. Stop. My heart practically leaps out of my chest as I immediately freeze, hands retreating from the cutting board. Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> Did I hand you a hatchet? Hmm. No. Then why are you using that as one? It looks like you're trying to lop off some fingers. In response to my puzzled look, she takes the knife off me and starts demonstrating the correct technique herself. Oh, Alison, are you literally just like thwapping the knife down? Oh, please. I guess, I guess it makes sense that she wouldn't know how to chop vegetables properly considering she's only just learned how to go grocery shopping. <laughs> Thank you for the knife. I thought you'd be more help than him in fixing this up. Look, curl your hand in next to where you want to cut, like this. Now use the knife like a lever instead of wildly hacking away. We're making nice, slow slices, not some slasher B-movie scene. Okay. Right, I think I have it. B-movie? According to all known- <laughs> Eileen hands the knife back and after a breath to steady myself, I have another try. Wow, that suddenly- oh, hi! <laughs> why did- Why- why did the- Why did the CG start there? Why did the camera start there? <laughs> oh, that jump scared me! Jump scared by Booba! Oh, she's glaring at me, did she notice the- <laughs> Did she notice? Oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> oh, hold on a sec. I, oh. Ah, ah. Right. She soon starts frowning as I slice away, but at least she's not yelling at me again. <laughs> My eyes are up here. I'm guessing you don't cook for yourself? Her eyes rest on the collection of lopsided shapes sitting before me. Well, I'm, I'm trying. I'm lucky if I don't mess up instant noodles. <laughs> she looks terrified. 
She looks so scared. Poor Alison. Huh? I thought those were impossible to get wrong. I'm genuinely impressed. Hmm? You do all your own cooking? Not like I have anyone else to cook for me. Healthier than living off pizza and burgers, too. What about Wallace? Aren't you roommates? No, he just loafs around here sometimes. I've tried to get him to help, but he's no better than you are. I'm always feeding him and letting him crash on my couch. He even bugs me for free pictures for his writing. Oh, my Wallace! Buddy! Buddy Chumpel, pay your artists. <laughs> I love, I love this. Oh, the, the little smile, wait, the smile. The little smiley. Oh, I love that. She sets down her knife in genuine, if depressing, thought. Hmm. Maybe we should just become roommates. No, what? No, what if we become roommates? What if? What if? Do you want a roommate? Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> paid in, paid in company. No paid in exposure. Just be like, I I will write the things. If you do the art, I will pay you in exposure. Ah, <laughs> oh, gonna go start preparing dinner. Thank you for stopping in, Bob. I hope you have a lovely dinner, and thank you for stopping in too. I think I'm starting to get a handle on their relationship now. As strange a pair as they might seem. The stern and uncompromising Eileen and gentle giant Wallace seem like they're a compatible couple. See, I love the thought here where it's like it looks like they're a couple. I hope they're both gay. I'm here rooting for both of them to be gay. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not. I thought you might be together. Nope. Just friends. So much for that. She waves away the idea so easily that it must have come up before. In fact, back at the cafe, Wallace seemed quick to clarify that too. Wallace's voice pipes up from behind us. You know, it's not often Eileen invites someone else over for dinner. Oh my god, we got voices! We got voices! Character time! <laughs> exactly! Yeah, Alison described Wallace as a bear. As soon as I saw the line bear, I was like, oh, so he's gay too? <laughs> I mean, I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. Ho oh. ho. I don't invite anyone over for dinner. You just show up most of the time. <laughs> Including now, actually. Wait, so it was meant to just... Oh, it was meant to just be us two? Oh? I've had to put up with him like this since high school. <laughs> I guess no one else would. Objection. I'm the one who puts <laughs> up with you. Overruled. <laughs> they feel more like it's it's more like a sibling relationship to me. I I feel like the the banter between them is is more more like sibling relationship than romantic relationship. I'm the one currently holding a knife. Touche. Oh, objection withdrawn. <laughs> With that, he goes back to quietly watching television. I'm starting to get how Eileen deals with others in general now. She simply has no filter when it comes to stating what she believes to be true. That could be a problem just as much as shyness, though. Thinking back to when we met, the only reason I didn't write the episode with her off is Caprice and Wallace nudging me afterwards. But here she is, looking after her friend and providing me with a meal. It took a while, but I'm glad I met her in the end. Perhaps that's why it's a little worrisome that she lives alone like this. I guess I will just have to... I guess I will just have to, like, play my part and very... honorably... move in with her. <laughs> um... You normally do all this without anyone to help? You don't need to say that like it's a bad thing. There's all sorts in the world. Some are better with people than others. Living alone suits me, and I can afford it. You know Caprice, though, don't you? So you're not completely alone besides Wallace. I... I... The, the, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's quite friendship. Uh, maybe. Maybe. 
maybe it'll become that way, but... Mm. Yeah, I'm just gonna take one for the team and, and move in with the attractive woman. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <sighs> Tell me, how did you and Caprice meet? Hmm. We were sitting at the same table for a biology lecture, and she started passing me notes during class out of the blue. Once we started talking afterwards, she... didn't really stop. Ah. That's the way it goes with her. Once you get caught in her orbit, she doesn't let you go. <laughs> Caprice isn't that bad. She's a sweet person, just... high energy. She gives a non-committal grunt before getting on with her cooking. I do wish she'd give her a chance. Caprice does only mean the best for her. Moving away from that, could you grab the plates and glasses? These shouldn't take long to fry. Root beer, please. Get your own, buddy. No. Water is healthier. Alison. <laughs> Alison, please save me from this woman. All I can do is give a weak smile. Much as I'd like to give him what he asks for, following Eileen's orders would probably be for the best. Especially in her house. Oop. With all of us well and truly full, we sit around the table and savour the meal we've had. It was the best food I've had in a while since it was neither takeout nor cooked by Rose. <laughs> Aw, I, I feel like Rose would be okay. Having sent a text message to her for a pickup, all that's left is to run down the clock as the evening wears on. Looking around the apartment, I point to one of the paintings on the wall. Did you paint all these? Yeah. Really need to find something else to put up there, though. Uh huh? But why? They're really good. I appreciate the thought. All of them have dumb little mistakes, though. Just needed something to make the walls less bare while I, when I moved in, and never got around to replacing them. You like painting people in particular, don't you? Hmm. Just into portraits and figures. Modern art's all well and good, but I started with figure drawing and ended up attached to it. Bodies are pretty fascinating when you... When you think about them. Really think about them, that is. I've spent days just sitting there sketching, trying to work out how the muscles fit together, how lighting interacts with skin and all that. The way she rattles off her thoughts with such feeling gives away how much she cares about the subject. I can't say I take it quite as seriously as she does, but I can see where she's coming from. Hmm. Interested in this stuff, Alison? Me? I just drew a little in high school, passing the time, that kind of thing. Nothing wrong with that. I sketch on my tablet and Eileen gives pointers sometimes. <laughs> Maybe I should throw you to the wolves and tell Caprice you like doing art as well. <sighs> you wouldn't. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I can't help but giggle a bit at the two of them. Yet even as they do, there's a small pang of envy there. I can empathise with Eileen keeping her group of friends small, but I do wish I were closer to her. <laughs> In more ways than one, she's who I wish I could be. The familiar sound of a motorbike's horn can be faintly heard from outside, bringing an end to both my thoughts and this little outing. That for you? Giving a nod, I get up from my chair and collect my coat from Eileen's helpful hand, quickly throwing it over myself. Thank you. Thanks for tonight. It was nice. Not wanting to keep Rose waiting, I wave Wallace goodbye as I take my leave, with Eileen coming along to see me out at the door. Got everything with you? I quickly pat around my pockets to make sure. Phone, purse, keys. They all seem to be there. All good. I'll see you then. If you want to come around again, feel free. <laughs> I love that that line was voiced. I'm... Yes. If I'm not too much trouble, that'd be nice. No. Oh, I love them. I love them. I love them. I do a poor job of hiding my happiness at the offer. My reply just a little too quick to sound natural. Believe me, you're no trouble. It honestly does me good to see you a bit more upbeat. 
Oh. I tilt my head a little at the odd idea. You just seemed kind of skittish before, but now you're all sunshine and oh. rainbows. It suits you. Oh, look at that smile. Look at that smile. This is so cute. They are so cute. I love this. Look at that smile. Ooh, I'm in love too. I'm sorry, Alison. Move over. <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. This is so cute. And Miyoko Cho, hello. Welcome, welcome. Now kiss. That's that's me. I'm I'm here with the two Barbie dolls going, now kiss. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm a bit shy. Nah. Nah. Not to mention a bit homesick. Being able to talk with friends outside of school was a nice change. Not to mention having a homemade meal. Even if I didn't help that much, it did take my mind off things. Eventually, as my mind slowly manages to get back into gear, I muster the words to say what I want to tell her as I get past being so flustered. If you don't mind me being around for dinner, maybe being together in a club wouldn't be so bad. Oh. Are you really doing the club pitch right now, Allison? Really? That's what you're going- okay. All right. She hesitates for a good few moments, making me doubt myself as I offer the suggestion as carefully as possible. She knows I like her as a person, so hopefully she can look past her past her previous experiences. Just as I begin to think I've overstepped the mark, she gives an almost comically long sigh. The horn sounds again in the distance as silence reigns, but my feet stay plastered as she comes to an answer. Fine. Tell Capri she can have her dumb club. Oh my god, we did it. We're in. We're in. We get to spend time with her every day after school. Maybe not every day, but a lot of the time. <laughs> Thank you. Yes! Yes! Victory! Victory, we have created an excuse to spend more time with her. Good times. Just don't make me regret it. I won't. With an enthusiastic nod and a wave, I start off down the hallway once more, Eileen disappearing into her apartment as I look back. Hello! Welcome, welcome! How am I today? I'm doing really well, thank you! Um, I, I just had a, a chocolate chip brioche bun, which was really nice. We've got gay women, which is very nice. I'm a big fan of the women. I'm feeling very comfy, I got my blanket around me. It's a good day! It's a good Tuesday! How are you doing? I hope you're doing well as well. Hope you're having a, a good start to the week so far. <laughs> Women. Uh, with an enthusiastic nod and a wave, I start off down the hallway once more, Eileen disappearing into her apartment as I look back. Even as I walk down the hallway, my steps somehow feel lighter than they did as I entered. Being around others usually makes me exhausted, but right now, I feel more comfortable than ever. Yeah, it's it's, it's called having a crush. <laughs> Oh, they're so cute, though. I love those. Ah, oh, it does sound like a nice day. Yes! Yeah, it's going... It's going pretty well so far. I'm glad you're doing well, too. Glad things are going nicely. Wallace! It's nice to see you again. How's it going? No. Not joining this club thing, if that's what you're thinking. Come on! But... Word on the street was that pizza was involved. Uh, besides, I don't feel I can I can deal with the both of you without some backup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that much trouble, am I? I love it, Wallace. No, <laughs> I'm not that much trouble, am I? Oh, still glowing after a great birthday weekend. Oh, you got hot pot, nice. Oh, I'm so glad you had a lovely birthday weekend. Happy, happy late birthday. I'm glad it went well. I'm glad you had a good time. It's always so nice when you're, like, treated to food as well. Nothing tastes as good as free. <laughs> but yeah, happy late birthday. I'm not that much trouble, am I? Remind me who persuaded me into agreeing to this again. She's got a point. Oh, happy birthday. You're the last person who should be agreeing with her. 
smiling and sitting back in the old wooden chair, I take a look about the noisy room. Everyone inside must be thankful for the heat being turned up, the weather outside having been freezing before we entered. There's a certain charm to the restaurant given its exposing aging brick, exposed aging brick walls and wooden furniture, however hard it may be. It takes a bit of speaking up for us to hear each other over the busily chatting couples and groups around us, but like Dad said, the more people at a restaurant, the better the food will be. That's true. The, if, if it's busy, that means they're probably good there. <laughs> I notice Eileen eyeing Wallace's beer in an unsubtle manner, the large glass perspiring away like in a commercial. I'd taken his apparent age as just his beard making him look older, but I guess he really does have a few years on us. <clears throat> Man, I miss beer. It'd go so well with this. Here I was thinking you were far too uptight to do something like underage drinking. Remember the trip to Europe me and my family took last year? You think I just drank soda over there? <laughs> well... Seriously? I was in Munich, Wallace. I mean, really. If, if you go to Germany, you're gonna have beer. I mean, I would at least. Caprice and I can only smile at her little lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sad, Eileen. It's only a couple more years, then you can drink all you want. Yeah, I always... It's so interesting to me. I always forget how the drinking age in America is 21. Because I feel like I see so many things about, like, like, college students drinking and forgetting that it's, like, technically illegal. Like, <laughs> the fact that you can be seen as an adult from 18, but then you can't drink for another three years after that has always been really fascinating to me. It's a choice. It is, it is certainly a choice. The look of pure and unrelenting disdain Eileen gives her at being reminded of the weight goes gleefully ignored, which is probably for the best. Our chatter is interrupted by the arrival of a waiter, a weedy young man clad in a plain red and black uniform. It's impressive how well he maneuvers all our pizzas and slides uh, and sides onto the table, all our mouths watering as they steam away. With a curt, please enjoy, he leaves us to our feast. Oh, I wonder what they got. I wonder what pizza they got. We got pepper and broccoli on that one. I'm guessing that's a meat one, meat feast at the top. Uh, is is that is that meant to be like pineapple at the side? Might be pineapple. I hope it is. <laughs> Damn, they're fast here. Exactly. Best pizza place in the city. Yeah, so if, if you're 18, yeah, you can vote and you can join the army, but you can't have a beer. It, it's, it, it is really interesting to me. It's, I also feel like when the, the drinking age is so high, it doesn't feel like a positive. It feels more like, especially knowing like teenagers and young adults, it's like if something is denied, being at that stage of life, I feel like it's it's safer to like let it be legal and have it in like a controlled environment legally than to have to like sneak around behind people's backs and then probably overindulge and binge and everything goes bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's like my my opinion of it. Like I I never really felt the need to like go out and get drunk off my face because I always had the experience at home of just like having a glass of wine just to see if I'd like it, have like a drink and know that it was allowed, it never felt like a, a taboo thing for me, so I never wanted to, like, rebel with it. But yeah, oh, pineapple and pizza, you're all for? Yeah, I, me too. I'm I'm here for pineapple and pizza. I like it. I'm, I feel like it, it gives it a nice tang. I've, I'm, I'm a fan of pineapple and pizza. But, uh, I, it's, the, the thing that always gets me is when people are so, like, against it. Like, I don't understand that mindset. Like, if you don't like it, that is completely fine. But why would- why would you get mad about, like... Why- why would you be mad about other people liking it? Like, nobody's forcing you to eat it. Why- why- why make a big deal of it? Let- let people enjoy what they like. That is my opinion. <laughs> 
But yeah, ah, oh, other countries also aren't as car crazy though. Oh, that's a good point too. That's a good point as well. I, I, I guess that's like part of the reason for 21 being the drinking age because of more people in the US tend to learn how to drive at an early age. But it's like, I don't think having the drinking age higher really counters that. Like, people are still going to drink anyway, whether it's legal or not. They're just going to do it in more unsafe ways if it's not legal. <laughs> that's that's my opinion on the matter. That's 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 like my, my humble onion for here. But yeah. Niles Naomi, hello! Pizza, it's pizza! Yeah, I'm... I'm very picky with pizza. I don't like anything that tastes too tomato-y. I don't like the taste of tomatoes, but I do like really cheesy pizzas. And I do like pineapple on pizza. I think it's good. I, I'm, 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 I'm a pineapple appreciator. <laughs> right, on to here. Best pizza place in the city. <laughs> How many of you actually tried? Doesn't matter, since I've already tried this place. She says, busily shove shoving a slice of pizza into her mouth. Eileen starts on hers, but mine catches the eye of Wallace. I swear, if this is going to be a pineapple on pizza confrontation right now, I'm going to laugh so hard. Huh? Oh no, it's different. Okay. It is not pineapple. Okay. Vegetarian? You're not a leaf eater, are you? Well, that's rude. Excuse me, Wallace. He says this with genuine concern in his voice. Excuse me? I just like the taste. The answer satisfies him as he goes to work on his own. The fact it's a meat lover's pizza is less than surprising. Wow, he's so judgmental. What the heck? I thought he was quite nice to begin with, but the more the game goes on, the more I think he's kind of just like a, a little bit of an asshole, honestly. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a little bit of an ass. Well, okay. Think you can take the wallet hit for tonight? Yeah. No problem. Uh... Yeah, no problem. It's a little sad how obviously she's trying to convince herself of the fact. The only reason I'm not having a quick check myself is because I budgeted the trip days in advance. And even Wallace looks like he's doubting himself a little. <sighs> Such is life of a struggling college student. <sighs> sure is. I really need to get a job. You don't have one either? I'm planning to get one. Hmm. <sighs> And when will you? Huh? Um... Soon? Eileen just grimaces. She got me. How's working at the store, Wallace? Not exactly riveting, but it's a living. Oh yeah, I forgot he works at a gun shop as well. He works at a gun shop and then he's disdainful towards... Uh, vegans and I... <laughs> Wallace. Uh, it's okay. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's just because he doesn't know any better. <laughs> it's okay. Like if if Eileen is close to him, then I I I do trust him a little bit. But mm. as I turn to Eileen, she just shrugs as she pulls out another slice. No job and no excuse like studying. Guess I'm a slacker like Caprice. Given her apartment, it's a surprise that she could afford to live in that area and pay her tuition at the same time. I have to admit, I am envious of how she seems to have her life together. I've never met someone so independent yet doing such a good job of it. Look, if, if my experience is anything to go by, anyone who seems like they have their life together, they don't. Everyone is just doing a really good job of hiding it. I don't think anybody has their life together. Not a single person in the world. I that is that is what I am convinced of. <laughs> She's just good at good at hiding it. Wallace momentarily bringing his phone up to check the time spurs Caprice into action. Her twisting around uh, her twisting about in her seat and fussing around with her coat draped over the back takes everyone's attention. Caprice 
She finally writes herself after a few moments, her own phone proudly in hand. Let's exchange phone numbers! As a club, we have to stay in contact. I quickly turn to grab my phone while Caprice tries to talk to a very reluctant uh, tries to talk a very reluctant Wallace into going along with her plan. His dreary look already makes me feel a little sorry for him, especially as he cracks and gives up. Is he even a student? If he's like several years older and working in his family's gun shop, is he even a student? Can he even actually join the club? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> At least she and I are already sorted. It wasn't long after we met that Caprice asked to exchange contact details with me. I take my phone in hand and look to Eileen instead, who looks up from who looks up from eating with little interest. Don't want to? She just shrugs. I feel myself deflate a little from the excitement of earlier. Having overestimated how close we'd managed to become. <laughs> the rejection. <sighs> I don't really use it much. Reading the room as she glances about, she reluctantly pulls out an ancient looking flip phone. <gasps> she has a flip phone. Oh my god. I can't help but stare in stunned silence at such a relic. Huh? It's not that weird, is it? I've just never had a use for a fancy one. It's definitely weird. I was gonna try to get everyone on this group messaging app, too! What's wrong with calling? You know, that thing phones were made for? Eileen. Eileen, we can't call. I have social anxiety. <laughs> Thoughts I had of possibly messaging Eileen start to vanish. I can't imagine her actually wanting to text anyone with that thing, and even the idea of calling somebody fills, with me, fills me with anxiety. <laughs> oh. Shakes hand with Alison. Me too. Me too. Phone calls. Never. As for Eileen, I think I might have inadvertently disappointed her by not tempering Caprice's reaction. With a quiet falling over the table, we end up concentrating our, on our cooling pizza rather than our phones. So, I was right, right. Best pizza, please. At least Caprice's endless enthusiasm and bright nature come in useful sometimes. The mood instantly lifting. <sighs> you were right. Wallace gives a thumbs up as he tries to grab some cheese coming off the slice he's working on. They don't skimp on the toppings, do they? All right, listen up, everybody. My first executive decision as club president coming here is now, uh, as, as club president, coming here is now a regular event. No. Don't try your luck. You've got my art room and a warm body for the numbers you need. That's it. Eileen. So cold. <laughs> I'll come here with you. Don't worry. See, Alison's a true friend. She slips her arm around mine and pulls us together tightly. Not knowing how I should react, I end up nervously smiling while feeling myself flushing from the contact. I guess I'm just happy to hear her call me a friend. At least you've got Caprice with you as company during the day, for better or worse. Come on, Eileen, you're not jealous, are you? You and I can hang out at the club all the time now, too! <sighs> are you trying to make me reconsider it? Ah, oh, remember the day you gave up on your flip phone? Ah, oh, and made one of the biggest technological mistakes of your life. The dark days of owning a Blackberry. <laughs> I had a Blackberry too. I had a Blackberry. It did not last very long. <laughs> I did not have a Blackberry for very long. Oh, those were dark days. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't even think about that. I remember like I, I had a Blackberry and it had like a full a full keyboard attached to it. Like every single letter was a different button on the phone and they were so small you just couldn't type anything. You just, it, it was a great concept. I could, it, you, you can't use it. <laughs> it was wild. That was the one, yes. It's like, it's such a cool idea being like, look, my phone has a keyboard attached and then you had to like use a pen to press the letters. <laughs> Oh, it was bad. I, I I changed very quickly from my Blackberry. <laughs> yeah, you need the stylus to punch each button individually. Oh, back in the day. I'm 
I'm very happy with how far smartphones have come, I've got to say. Caprice satisfies herself with pouting as she takes a big bite from her pizza. Eileen might have agreed to the club, but I do wonder if the two will ever really get along. It's probably for the best that I'll be around to mediate. I'm glad things turned out this way in the end. Something about Eileen feels different from my high school friends. Or Caprice. Every time we become a little closer feels like a small victory. Oh wait, no, it uh, feels different from the high school friends or Caprice. Yeah, Eileen feels special. Feels special getting to learn getting to know Eileen. I can't imagine why. Definitely not gay. Clearly. Ah, uh, your dad had that black brain. Don't remember him ever actually using it much. Yeah, it was... I, d I don't think anyone actually ever used them. <laughs> it's still not as bad as the Nokia N-Gage, though. Does anyone remember that? <laughs> Probably not. Hopefully not. As Caprice grins at me, I realize that I'm smiling widely. I guess things really did turn out well. Hey, Eileen. Yeah? Yes. <gasps> How do you say cheers in Germany? Usually, Prost. Why? She looks suspicious until Caprice raises her glass of lemonade. The other side of the table groans loudly, but I've already begun to lift my glass in preparation, now left awkwardly dangling it midair. We're not doing this. I think we are. I'm sorry, we are doing this. Come on, this is a celebration, right? Wallace, help me out here. Wallace pauses, a piece of pizza hovering before his mouth. His dreary stare down makes it clear that he's here for pizza alone and not having a bar of this. A disappointed Eileen lets it drop, the neutral party going back to his meal. You're still here celebrating though! See? Allison's all in for it! Celebrations! Well, that's one way to drag me into this. All I can do is awkwardly smile in apology as the others grimace. <laughs> the awkward cheers. While they might hesitate to follow our diminutive new leader, Wallace and Eileen begrudgingly lift their glasses in solidarity with me. Even if their enthusiasm might not be matched, there is some sense of camaraderie between us all. As I raise my glass, I realize that a familiar feeling is no longer weighing me down. For the first time in a long while, I don't feel the unease of loneliness. In the end, maybe that's enough for me to toast this new club and the friends in it. Cheers. The most to our awkward new cheers. Art club. Prost. 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 You, you could hear how bored Wallace sounded there. That's so funny. Yay. To the new art club. We're beginning act two. Oh, start of act two. No, would this be a good spot to leave it at for now? This might be a good spot to leave it at, to save uh. and start next time. I'm gonna save here. I'm gonna make the save here. I love that it's only like three hours because I've spent like an hour talking. <laughs> but I feel like that would be a good spot to leave it at, to start the next stream. At the start of an act. Was that my first save? Yeah, I've, I've, I've just been playing it. I've just been playing the game, yeah. I don't need to save. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> See, I'm the kind of person where when I'm playing visual novels, I don't save unless it's like a game with, with options. Like, if it's a game with options, I will save at every single option. But otherwise, I just kind of don't save. Because especially with games like this, it's like if if the game crashes or something, you can skip. You can skip through. <laughs> but yeah, that 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 feels like a good a good spot to leave it at for now. So we've got our game saved. I'm gonna save it again just to make sure. Let's go back to the main menu. And yeah, that seems like a good spot to start it at next time. But oh I'm I'm already I, I already love almost all of the characters in this so far. 
<laughs> I can't wait to play more. I'm excited. Oh, and Kura Syllabus, you can't get over that you know someone named Eileen. <gasps> oh, I, I can't get over the fact that I'm playing two, ga two active games with characters called Eileen in because... <laughs> There's also, there's also my Baldur's Gate 3 character, who is Eileen Berrybottom, the old lady. <laughs> the, the, this Eileen is slightly different to the, the Cleric of Tear. Slightly. A little bit. Especially considering how, how short Eileen Berrybottom is as well. She's tiny. She's tiny and a sweetheart. And Eileen is abrasive and tall. It's so funny. It's so funny how different they are. They, they could not be more different. It's so it's so funny. <laughs> they're not the same person. I, I'm pretty sure they're not. I could be wrong. I could always be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're not. Anyway, with that, let's bloop. Let's head on over to here. Oh, look how comfy I am. Let me move over a bit. There we go. I got my comfy blanket. What if their soul is the same person? I don't know, they seem very different. They are they are very different. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, I'm so glad I'm finally getting the chance to start this though. I've it's it's like it's taken me so long to get to this point. I've I've been meaning to play it for ages. For so long. And then Twofold came out and I was like, I need to, to play First Snow even more. And I, 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 it's more of a priority. And it's still only now at the end of April that I'm actually getting around to it. But I'm glad I am. I'm glad it's finally, finally time. Finally time for First Snow. And then also Twofold. Twofold prequel Tuesday. Yes. But yes, I think with that, uh, I the brioche was really nice. Having the chocolate chip brioche roll was very, very nice. But it didn't do much for my hunger. I'm still very hungry. So I think it's time for me to go and get some dinner now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a little bit earlier than I usually end the stream, but only by a little bit. We're still like more or less at the four hour mark and that felt like a good spot to leave it at the next time. So, so yes, I think I shall finish the stream here and we can find a rate target. Let me see who's online. Ooh, there's a, there's, there's a few people I know online. Now I need to make decisions. Hmm. Where should we go? Ooh. Wait, let's raid Hio. Let's raid Hio. I'm going to send the raid over to Hio Cleo. Who is, uh, they're, they're starting their uncapped subathon today. Today is the first day of Hio's three year streaming anniversary celebrations. So it's the, the three year celebration for them, and they've just started a subathon. So I'm gonna send the raid over Hio's way. Let's send the raid to Hio. They're really cool. They play a lot of horror games, but they still manage to make them, like, make such a nice environment for it. But uh, either way, they're, they're currently playing Dishwashing Simulator. I don't know what this is. I have no idea what Dishwashing Simulator is. Is it literally just dishwashing? Is it just dis dishwashing? Is this a horror game? I have no idea. I'm going to send you over there anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. Here's the raid message. If you're subbed, we got the comfy. If you're not subbed, we have hearts. And I will send you over to Hio to celebrate their three-year streaming anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. It's been so fun. I'm so glad to finally be starting this. I don't know what this game is. I'm watching this dishwashing simulator. I, I think it might be a horror game. So be warned going in. It's, it's very dark and dingy looking. I have no idea what this is. But I want to send the, the love over to Hio to celebrate the, the three years, the three year anniversary. So I shall leave it at that for now and go and prepare myself some dinner, I think. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yes, thank you so much everyone for joining me today. Thank you for, for joining for Yuri time. Yuri time. Thank you, thank you. And I will see you all soon, hopefully. But that is it from me for now. I'm going to go eat food. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone for joining me today and until next time, bye bye!